Welcome everyone, I'm Into the Hero, to be joined by Pink, and this is the Shark Mod Lounge episode 263, I wanna say? 264. 263? 264? Yes. Ah, uh, uh, alright then. And yeah. Pink, is anything coming out on your channel? Ah! Uh Yes, there will be more videos on Ultimate Alliance coming out on my channel. That should be it. That's all I've got recorded. That's all I've got scheduled. Uh, if I do anything else on the later on in the week, then that'll happen as well. But I haven't planned for anything. Yeah. Well, as for my channel, uh, stuff's still getting made. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can very say. Nice. It, it's still very nice. Still in the process. I did uh did, did manage to get my stuff together for uh for both like I I still I was behind on schedule both on scripting and on uh other stuff for the videos. I finally finished doing the other stuff. So now I just need to do the scripting and recording and all that. You know the 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 meat of the videos <laughs> only. Yeah. Uh, but but like like on the on the other hand, the other stuff that I I had to had to work on weren't for this one video that I'm working on. They were for the videos going forward. So you know they they were important too. Right. So yeah, that. Uh, as for the group channel, we have Persona who the tank. Wow. As well as uh, or return to siege. Well, or or uh, or return to siege siege with with all three of us. The the warm up session that we had, yeah, that, as well as something else that I'm forgetting, but I will check momentarily. The problem the problem with with me scheduling the videos is that I am tempted to just try to remember them off the top of my head, and um, usually I do. But at the same time, the, some of the videos that we've, we've been able to record recently have come out to uh, less than stellar length. So I've, I've grouped, out, grouped them together as like trees mm. for a week, so you know. Which last week came out um, or attempt at doing commentary in 2K22 as, as well as uh, Fire Pro, uh, me and W playing Fire Pro before y'all showed up and he cut the recording. Ah! And I mean, really, it was just a lot, lot of Terry Funk, Fire Pro. Fair enough. It's about what I would expect from you guys. <laughs> so let us see. All right, I, I just, I just finished waiting for one loading screen to wait for another. I love the YouTube That's mobile app. <laughs> it's great. I believe it. Right. So, along with... <laughs> I'm dying. Along with Siege. Uh, the other the other game that, that we're going to be uploading a video of is uh, Guilty Gear XX Excellent Core. Nice. I like Guilty Gear. So yeah, that's that's it for the videos. Pink, what did you do? What have you done? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, I hope. Um, yeah, I I didn't really accomplish anything this week. I didn't get to invest any more time in Mass Effect. I didn't really do anything out of the norm. Um, I don't remember if we played Warhammer together this week or last week. I think it was the last week, though. That's Either a good last question. Week or last weekend, yeah. I think it was, it was um, last weekend, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Gladius, Gladius, however you'd like to pronounce it, I've heard it both ways. It's a very fun game. Feel feels like um, it's kind of like a turn-based implementation of a real-time strategy game, rather than just a full-fledged turn-based strategy game, because. 
you know, combat really seems to be the main focus of that game, which I'm fine with. But it, it seems to be the be-all, end-all, so... It, it's nifty. I like it. Because it enables me to, you know, think about how I, how I intend to conquer the world without stressing me out with the real-time uh, strategy. Yeah. Because... Yeah, some games like uh, Age of Empires specifically, I like them. I like them a lot, especially in theory. But to actually sit down and play through a game, I tend to get a bit overwhelmed by all the the fact that everything's happening in real time. So I never feel like I'm really playing optimally. So I, I always feel like I'm doing something wrong and I can't really do anything to mitigate my errors because, you know, everything happens in real time. It's not... I'm not able to, like, pause the game or do everything in a turn-based way like I can do in Civ and Gladius. So, uh, I, I really like that Gladius has that real-time strategy combat feel, but it is also just straight-up turn-based in its mechanics. Cause it enables me to think more and play more optimally than I would with an actual real-time strategy. So it's appreciated. I like it. Um, yes. I'd like it a lot more if I found any of the factions in Warhammer interesting. I just yep. don't really. Uh, once once, the, the, once we finished with that game, W and I spent, on, at least, I think, an hour just talk, talking back and forth about how I don't find any, any of the factions interesting either. <laughs> yeah it, it's it's hard because yeah i I've, I've not ever been into anything warhammer e. it's just not really a setting or lore that really ever appealed to me so it's like from the outside looking in it's like I, i'm checking around to see if there's anything that really sparks my interest and outside of the necrons which are just kind of angry robot minion things Similar yeah. to like DC's Brainiac. I mean, the the, like, the Necrons, the, Rec the Necrons are are Terminator, Terminator mummies, right? And that, that's cool enough. But like the Space Marines themselves, cool designs, but I don't find them super interesting. Then you've got the other type of Space Marines, which is just Space Marines but angrier. And the other type and of I Space Marines. That. Yeah. And the other it, type it of Space feels, Marines. Yeah, it, it and does. The other type all of Space Marines. Very, Samey, yeah. yeah, yeah, like the uh, there, there, there is the adeptus. They're just Iron Man. That sets them apart because because they're not Space Marines. <laughs> ah, there's uh like technically the the Chaos Space Marines are not really, really Space Marines. Uh, remember the 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 Chaos monsters from Vermintide? Yeah, yeah, they're that. Ah, and stuff like that. But like you know, if you if you want to dive deep in deep, deep into it, then technically there is variance in in the in in the factions. It's just that looking at the glance, it's like all right. So I have seven seven human races. Also, uh, the Eldar who are just like Robo elves, and the Necrons who are just robots. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I, I have a choice between yeah. human and robot. Hmm. Yep. Very much sci-fi. Yep. So yeah, if the if the factions were, you know, more appealing to me as an outsider, I think I'd like the game a lot more. But as, as it stands, just because I have like little to no interest in Warhammer 40k, it it does kind of bounce off despite the despite the gameplay mechanics actually being fairly good. So I, I will be investing more time into it down the line. It's just not something I'm super excited to be into because, again, like none of the factions really interest me in any way. Yeah, I mean, like the, the the thing is that like I know that this would have been like very much impossible to implement implement it into the game, but like you know there are more interesting uh, space marine factions too. It's just that you don't get to play as them because you get the one, one default space marine, which I don't even know what which one that is. But like there's the, there's right. the, like there there they could have had some some interesting uh mechanic stuff for level or for uh right uh whatchamacallit like putting all of your points into working towards one faction's abilities i suppose because like there's the there's yeah. the fucking there's the the red legion or something like that i don't there's a guy that i watched from texas he's really into warhammer 40k that is why i know all of this <laughs> but uh -huh. yeah so uh 
because because he he always talks about Warhammer while playing other games. Anyway, ah. <laughs> so yeah, the, there's like a Red Legion or Blood Legion or, Legion or something like that. They're vampires. Like they're they're just they're just fucking eight foot tall vampires. That's that would have been more a bit more interesting than you know just army people. Yeah. Like, there's the there's the 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 what the space wolves, they're real wolves. Why? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually a lore explanation, and it it might be funnier than that. Honestly, if memory serves, the actual lore explanation for why the space wolves and and also another faction that the name I don't remember exists is because uh the son of the emperor thought wolves were really cool, so he he just he just went okay. So what if I made made my my units wolves? And that's how werewolves were born in 40k, I guess. All right then. Yeah. But yeah, it's a thing of like you know, you get told stuff, so, you get told stuff about Warhammer and its lore, and you go, ah, that's funny. That this this seems like an interesting or, or like a funny world. You know, you, this feels like something that I could actually enjoy. And then, then you actually look at look at the game, and it's like, all right, so human, 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 elf, human, human, dwarf, ogre, mm -hmm. human, 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 cool. I love my choices. I think you're lying to me. I don't think there are actually any ogres. Oh, uh, they're they're all in 40k. Like I I I okay. I, I mixed mixed race, races from both both fantasy and 40k. In 40k, there's ogres. In in fantasy, there and elves. In fantasy, there's there's elves, dwarves, and beastmen technically, but they always suck, so they might as well not exist. Ah. <laughs> like be beastmen, beastmen are there if if you want to run like a D and D campaign. And need jobbers, if, for like, as far as I know. Fair enough. Oh, uh, but yeah, I did. I, I was I was of the of the on the other side side for with the gameplay as well. Like I I didn't hate it. I I like how I have to specify that immediately because because apparently nuanced opinions don't exist as we found out last week. I'm still salty. Yes. <laughs> No, but genuinely, like it, I, I thought the gameplay was fine, but but while playing it, I I just felt like I I wanted to play on RTS more. But then again, I I also have just like I I've played StarCraft a good bit growing up, so ah, uh, if not a, if not not a not the full game, then you know a, a demo of it. But I I think I, I had a demo the demo disc of either StarCraft one or two, I forget. So like I'm I'm just used to to how real time strategy works and, and this game resembles RTSs so much that that it just made made me go that it, it made me wish that I I could just fucking speed things up with clicks per minute. Yeah, I get you. Uh, but yeah, did you did did you do anything else? I guess because you said you said didn't you didn't do much. <laughs> I don't think we played anything else that I'm aware of. Um, we we did finish up your Japan civilization game. Yes, the right the rice has gone from the world, all of it. Rice to space, it's gone. It's out in the Andromeda. Yeah. Um. I stopped by for a little while when you were playing as uh, old Abe Lincoln, Honest Abe, yeah. but I, I didn't stick around for too long there, maybe just a couple hours. Yeah, so in, in that game, I managed to nearly win with, win with all of the conditions. And then I, and, and then I won, and, and then I won with, with science. Nice. Like uh, W has a picture because he, he, he took a picture of it. Like I had, I don't even know how many. Like I want to say fifteen policy cards by the end game. That is a lot. Yeah, because like I I I had uh different uh what you call it wonders that gave me policy card slots, and then I also yeah yeah and and then I also won won the vote to get get a policy card slot. <laughs> And all that. So I just had. A, I didn't like, even know you could get a policy card from the, what's it called, the World of Congress. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had that happen. Ah, yeah. There, there's a vote that comes up sometimes where it's like, uh, such and such, such member ga gains a wildcard policy slot. 
Oh. And I just, I just put put all of all of my fucking all of my, and not all of them. I put I want to say five hundred points into it, which was fine because I had two thousand. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And I and I won, so yeah, they they regret that. <laughs> I also nearly converted the the world to freedom. Nice. Which is of of course America's religion. Of course, yes. And then, uh, and I, I was the only only country with uh with another's capital, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, technically, yes. <laughs> I mean, I I didn't fight them for it, but I still did have it, so I guess it counts. This is true. Uh remember who uh, took the capital originally it was babylon wasn't it uh no it did uh babylon tried to take it i think i don't remember something like that and then yeah it if i remember correctly it was congo declared war on babylon then babylon said okay and and then they uh took their capital but then it went into a uh, revolt and that's when we took it yeah and then like e even but even better uh, I made an alliance with with uh, with Babylon, and it, it 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 went for like I want to say like thirty turns, more than thirty thirty turns, because I I had I had like I had uh, an alliance with him for like three extensions, so you know a while. Yeah. After that, su surprise war by Hammurabi. <laughs> I I killed all of his units except maybe like two. Like all of all of his all of his military strength was just just in just in Babylon's defenses. That's impressive. So then 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 he was like, "All right, peace." I went, "Okay." <laughs> On second thought, this surprise war wasn't such a good idea. How about yeah. peace, yo? But but by by the time that he he declared peace, I'd already called called together a, an emergency meeting and declared a thing, and it it was like, "All right, so if if um." If Hammurabi, if Babylon doesn't uh, leave Hammurabi's hands, then he'll he'll get the de uh, fucking democratic vote points points. And I went, I don't want Hammurabi to have democratic vote points, so I declared war on him again. <laughs> he then killed all of my units because oh no, <laughs> because he just had a had a better um setup for defense. Uh like he he had a. He had an airport with a bomber right next to uh uh city city with walls. Oh yeah. That sucked. <laughs> I believe it. So after that I I moved out all of my units just just on his doorstep so he, he doesn't know that, that I don't fuck around. And I declared spe declared peace. <laughs> uh Kango Kango was on my side that whole game. Eventually, uh, eventually the the Aztec, I not the, the Aztec, uh, the Maya, uh, Montezuma, Montezuma. Yeah, that's also, the Aztec. All right, yeah. But yeah, then the the Aztec, the Aztec also uh approached me from the other side of the world and went, hey, what if we make Fortnite on land? Because it seems like that, that that's a cool idea. <laughs> <laughs> they they did this after ban banning my music. From their country because it, it turned turned people away from Taoism into freedom. <laughs> oh, terrible! Yeah, I still accept that though because because uh, the Aztec had I want to say fifteen giant killer robots. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. So I went okay. Always yeah. better ally with them rather than oppose them. Yeah. So so I, I went okay. So how about we make a military alliance? <laughs> so, <laughs> sounds cool, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, and then Cleo Cleopatra spent the entire entire game uh, denouncing me because I turned turned Egypt Egypt to freedom. <laughs> and then Australia was, was just with Cleopatra for some reason, I don't know why. Mm. But yeah, that that was a good game. It was funny. I like it. Uh, like I, I want I want to say I spent. Genuine, like fifty turns, if not more, just camped out on the other continent with with uh, Egypt and 
the Aztec and uh, Australia and did nothing aside from pop fights. <laughs> like I, I had two great debaters on that continent. Nice. So if, if if they went anywhere near where I could see, they they just immediately evaporated until they they could make their own. I like it. Uh. So yeah. Oh yeah. The, I guess the last thing of thing of note is that I, I'm actually kind of proud of how I uh, made my. Uh. What you call it? My resources grow because, like, by by the end game, I had, I want to say, plus two seventy gold and plus three hundred and three hundred something, uh, faith every turn. Oh, so a lot yeah, of faith per turn. Yeah. I mean, technically, I I was running faith focused. It just didn't turn out that way. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. Did you do anything else? Well, in line with Civ, I played a game as Georgia because I, I was talking with Soon the other day about what I considered to be the weakest Civs in the game, and he had a minor disagreement where he felt Georgia was more deserving over some of the Civs that I had listed, and I told him no because Georgia is actually a fairly decent. Uh, science and or faith based turtle sieve because they've got strong defenses they can get envoys into city states with more efficiency than most and I felt that that was a lot more powerful than the other bonuses that the other sieves had that I had listed and so to kind of prove it mostly to myself and not to soon because he wouldn't be paying attention to this anyway I played a game as Georgia it was uh, heavily faith and science focused. I made a religion super quick. I went and converted all the city states within my continent super quick. So every envoy I sent to them counted as double. And then once I found the other continent, I found all the city states, or so I had thought, and converted all of them to get double envoys there as well. So by the end of the game, this is like mid to late game. I am now suzerain of all these city-states with dozens upon dozens of envoys placed in them because I got double envoys basically from the jump and it was great. But it also sucked ass because I want to say there were there were eight or nine city-states that spawned. Only one of the city-states was a economic City state, and the there was another one that was only one city state type, which was a one science city state. Th this would change later because uh, when I was googling up some uh, research on Georgia because I want to check out her achievements to see if I could hit any achievements along the way, I learned that there's an achievement for having all the city states in the game converted to Georgia's Georgia's majority religion. Now, I had not gotten that achievement yet, despite all the city states that I had met having been under my control of the great religion of Cthulhuism, uh -huh. as is usual. <laughs> so I was like, hey, if I've got all these city states under my religious control and I haven't gotten that achievement yet, that means there's another city state hiding out somewhere that I just haven't found yet. And uh, sure enough, I went up to the Ar Arctic kind of. Just uh, just a few tiles above Rome's capital, actually, because uh, Caesar was in the game and he was uh, blocking off the uh, final city state, which was in fact a science based city state. So there were two science city states in the game. I just thought there was only one for a long time because for a long time I thought I had discovered all the city states when I had really not. I see. Which, yeah, that was actually a major bonus because. One of the world wonders, the Kilwa Kiswani, that gives you a 15% bonus to all yields provided by your city-states that you're a suzerain of. So, in that city specifically, 
you'll get the extra 15% for every, you know, every yield that a city state provides. Economic city states provide you if provide you with gold, so you get 15% more gold. Science, 15, 15% more science, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you've got suzerainty of two city states of that yield type, like two science, two economic, two whatever, that would then give you the 15% yield increase in the city with Kilwakiswani, as well as 15% increase in all your other cities. So, so the play for me, what I was trying to do, was I wanted to turtle up and do a science victory because I would be getting the extra science from the city-states that I was whose reign of, as well as a 15% increase in my science yield in all my cities, which didn't happen for a long time because, again, I had only found the one science city-state, so I was only getting 15% extra science in that one city with Kilwa and not the others. But once I found that last remaining city-state, which thank thankfully was a science-based city-state, then I got suzerainty of it and the 15% science yield in all other cities outside of the one with Kilwa. Nice. But uh, what was really crappy about that scenario was the grand majority of the city-states were all military city-states. And what they do is they grant you extra production in cities with encampments. I built no encampments. Ah. I had none. There were no encampments built. I, I had a few in the later game, but only because I took some cities from Norway because they were jerks to me the whole game and they needed to die. I so, see. Yeah, I myself no, never built any encampments, so I never got any bonuses from the military city-states. So, yeah, that, that, that could have stood to be a lot better. And again, I only had one economic city-state spawn in the entire game. So I never got a 15% increase to gold yields in all my cities. Just a single one with the Kilwa. So that, that, that could have stood me a lot better. It, it would have been a lot smoother had I gotten some decent city-states that weren't all military-based. Yeah. Though the military-based city-states, they did provide some great bonuses because uh, one of them was a COD, which is, allows me to do full damage to city walls. So that actually did enable me to invade Georgia, invade Norway with relative ease because it meant walls were no longer really an issue. So I was able to knock them over pretty easily. Um, but that, that was really the only benefit. I, I don't think I got any real benefit from any of the other military city states because they're usually just kind of bottom tier for my play styles. Um... Science city states weren't any better because one of them was Hattusa, which gives you strategic resources which you've researched but not improved upon, which would help in the later game with like oil and uranium. But I had plenty of oil in my empire and I never got far enough to research uranium. So that was kind of redundant. And I don't remember what the final science city state was. I know it was kind of garbage though and didn't really provide benefits. Would have been great if it were Geneva, but I could not get that lucky. Yeah. Um, I wound up falling into a religious victory a bit sooner than I was anticipating because my neighbors were Norway and Tokugawa's Japan. And they, they both attempted to pursue religion. But I was able to get my apostles and missionaries to convert their holy cities a lot faster than they could keep up with. A uh, big part of that reason is because Tokugawa only had one city for much of the game. So that meant only one city to convert. And once I did that, he was no longer able to pump out any of his own personal missionaries because he was now converted to my faith. Any missionary he pumps out would then be mine. So that was easy enough. Norway, uh, they pursued their religious victory hard from the start because they were pumping out holy sites faster than me, and I thought I had decent production in all my cities. They, uh, I think they were, if they weren't the first to get a religion, they were definitely second because I was third, I want to say. Because, uh, 
I believe it was somebody else in the world built the Stonehenge, which grants a great profit. I believe Norway got the next great profit, and then I got the third one. Tokugawa would have gotten the fourth. But, uh, yeah, Norway came in strong and hard with his holy sites, and uh, my early game was not so good because I had built two scouts and found two more in goody huts, which is not great because I was on a smaller continent, so I didn't really need all those scouts. So what I eventually did was once Norway popped out like 20 missionaries, which I was not comfortable with, I just declared a surprise war on him and had my scouts eat the missionaries. So, yeah. I, that, that's how I prevented him from getting a strong foothold with his religion. Then I was able to easily, well, quote-unquote easily, convert the rest of his cities. And then once I traveled to the new continent that housed um, Rome, Portugal, and Scotland... I was able to basically steam my roll way through with my missionaries because I'd gotten the, uh, or I'd gotten the Golden Age and chose the Exodus of the Evangelists bonus, which gives you extra movement on your missionaries, apostles, etc., as well as two extra charges. So, two extra apostle charges on a apostle with, like, something good like, uh, proselytizer or translator, which, you know, proselytizer removes 75% of the uh, former religious pressure, and then translator, like, triples the apostle charge in foreign cities. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That, coupled with the extra charges, was super good and really able to catapult me, catapult the religion onto the new continent, despite the fact that Portugal, who I believe built Stonehenge, had converted everyone over there. I was able to snowball through Rome, snowball through Scotland. Then I wanted to delay my victory because there's a achievement you get for building the Apadana World Wonder and then constructing seven additional World Wonders. I was really close to getting that uh, achievement, so I wanted to not convert Portugal, convert the majority of Portugal to my religion. So I just had my apostles camped out there for a while, and they they were just hanging out, being being friends and whatnot. And then, like, uh, I, I'd say about five turns before I was able to complete my final world wonder, one of the Portuguese apostles suicide dives onto my apostles, and he dies, oh. and it converts one of these cities that he had just founded because it's only got one population in there. So, nice. <laughs> and so that... That gave me the religious victory, and I was a little upset because I didn't want to achieve it just so so quickly because you know I had five more turns until I acquired that achievement. But uh, yeah, that happened. I was able to get the achievement. I clicked uh, one more turn on the end game screen, which puts you back in the game, and you you just you know yeah. there's no more end goal to achieve, but you get to keep playing. And thankfully, the achievements don't get turned off that way. So about five turns later, I finished the final seventh wonder in the city with the Apadana and got my achievement. And I I called it good there. I then saved the game, exited Civ, and considered my Georgia run a rousing success. And that basically does it for my week. Because I didn't have any fun times with video games. I didn't watch anything this week. I just did a lot of running around outside downtown in the city doing work related stuff. So that that's no fun. And I don't want to talk about it. So right. I'll pass it over to you. Well then. Oh, uh, let's see. What the fuck did I do this week? <laughs> well, I have been playing 2K22. Nice. Had to, re had to reset my universe a third time for it to actually start working. Oh no. Yeah. That doesn't sound fun. Yeah, and now that it's working, the game has been crashing on me every, I want to say, half an hour. Oof. Sometimes sometimes it, it doesn't crash for a while and then it batches it. So it's it's like, alright, you open up the game, load into universe, crash. Alright, you load, you load into universe again, 
You open, 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 open up the, the match menu. Crash. Alright, I guess I'll just go in and edit, 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 edit a moveset. Crash. Okay, I just... I'll make a, make a team, because I need, need to make put these people... Crash. Yes. So that, that's been great. I've had 2K22 crash on me a few times, but not with any severe frequency. It's been pretty frequent for me. That's terrible. Yeah. Like, this is the reason that I, I, I'm not as glowing about the game as y'all are, because like, y'all didn't have a, have a problem. I can only really judge the game by my anecdotes, and my anecdotes is that the gameplay is fun. It's just, it's the, game, the game is not stable, and it's missing features. Right. <laughs> so, right. Like, the game is good, don't get me wrong. It's just not, not it's just not like the, I was going to say it's not the best in the series, but it, it probably is, it's just most, more telling about the series that it's the best one, rather than the actual game <laughs> quality, you know? Right, right. Uh, so yeah. Uh, other than that, I don't know. It, it's the game, like as I said last week. The gameplay is fun. I like actually doing the matches for the most part. That there are sports in there that I, I don't like either. But you know, <laughs> hopefully that will get sorted yeah, yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. It's just the everything else aside from being in being in a match is either missing features due to bugs or just in general. Yeah. And then, um, what was I going to say? And, and then, yeah, the, the crashes have, have not been uh, really, like, the, the, the crashes are making it hard to enjoy the game a lot. <laughs> I believe it. That doesn't sound pleasant at all. Uh, but yeah, I, I did get did get some some funny stories uh, from it, like like how Rey Mysterio had a blood feud with, with Brock Lesnar that he won. In a cage match. Nice. Uh, and, and 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 Brock was WWE ch WWE champion, which which now now is a, it is in Ray's hands because of the feud. I see. Uh, I also had another funny one, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Shit. It was like Randy Randy R. Oh yeah, fucking um. What you call it? Oh shit! The the guy who the guy from New Japan. You know the one <laughs> out of the five there, million. There are a lot of guys from New Japan. Yeah. Tanahashi. Tanahashi had had a few with Randy Orton. Ah. Oh, but that's also funny because I had to. I, I downloaded the Tanahashi CW and then I had to name him Tana, name, name him Tanahashi because I don't know what, but something was uh, was censored on cre community creations in the name. In Tanahashi? Yeah, in in, in Tanahashi. I don't know why. <laughs> what could be censored in there? I don't know. Like. I was gonna, gonna say, oh, maybe, maybe he's like catchphrase, but his catchphrase is catchphrase as far as I know is go ace. So unless they wrote go s, then I don't know. <laughs> That's so weird. I don't get it. Uh, I, I do like how how sometimes there's weird censoring though, like solo Sikoa. I I had a, I have a solo Sikoa that wasn't censored. There's another one on on, on community creations that I've seen that is censored. The Sikoa part. Interesting. But not all of it, it's just the sick. But like what? That, that was S -S 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 S-I-K is censored. I don't get it. <laughs> Me neither. Or uh, I, I like, I also saw like Attitude uh, like Deeper Attitude Era, oh no, it was Attitude Era uh, Triple H. And it was actually written out A star 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 Ood Era Triple H Alright At least with that one Like you know it, uh, It's funny but at least I get it 
Or like with sick. Or Tanahashi. Right. <laughs> There's a tit in attitude. Oh no. Yeah. Fucking uh, naked Charlotte Flair, that's fine. But we, can't, we have to remove the tit from attitude. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure Nick, the Nick Short Flash CW was, was taken down. I didn't check. <laughs> I didn't check either, but I should have. Alex isn't here. The joke isn't funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I have the weirdest fucking roster as well of people that I downloaded because it's it, I, I talked about it, it, it uh, somewhat, somewhat less because like, but like I, I get jobbers because you need jobbers. Yeah, like it's it's more fun when I actually know the jobbers instead of just being like, okay, who's this Alexander Wolf guy? I don't know. I guess he'll job. <laughs> but yeah, pretty good Brooklyn Wall <laughs> Brooklyn Brawler cause on there is uh, that's actually one I've not ever downloaded. I should ah. look into it though. I forgot the Brooklyn Brawler existed. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, like I, that's why I have Perry Saturn. I also down, download downloaded Dean Malenko because he's not Cyclope. <laughs> <laughs> I should get Cyclope too. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking make the Dean Malenko alternate that with just Cyclope. <laughs> yes, perfect. Oh, uh, I do have Hoovy. If in fact I have two. Hoovy. Yeah. Fair like, enough. Because I, I I saw uh, uh, Hoovy CW and I, I went, I I have to get get Hoovy because it, it's funny. Then I saw another one that looked better like two days later and I forgot that I had already downloaded the other one. So I, <laughs> so I have two women to get at us. Nice. I should also get Estarios now that I remember that he exists. Huh. <laughs> like I, I don't know why, but most of, most of the people I downloaded are just like luchadors that I don't even know. But whatever. They, right. they, 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 I, either I've heard of them or they look cool. One or the other. So, like, I have two Pentagons because I have both, both Power Puffer Pen Pentagon Black and, and Penta El Sierro. Fuck it. <laughs> Penta yeah. El Sierro Mero. I the think. other one. <laughs> I also have Ray Phoenix, the third Pentagon. Which is technically, te technically true because they are brothers, I think. I think so. I also have I also downloaded downloaded a per, uh, person that I don't know. I think they they might only be in like triple A. Uh, but but their their outfit is fucking cool, called Phantasm. Hmm. And like I, I've never heard of this wrestler, which is why they, and, and they they are like proper they are a proper luchador. So I'm assuming that they're active in in Mexico. Probably. Probably. Uh, I will look that up because it sounds familiar, but yeah, I I think I know a La Fantasma, but I don't think that that's the same person. Then again, I I don't remember what they looked like the La Fantasma that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, Santos Escobar. I think that's still his name. It's definitely his name in a 2K22. Uh, he was... Uh, he was either Fantasma Jr. or Elio Del Fantasma. Uh -huh. One of those two. But, uh... Phantasm. It's, it's either a trick of the brain or he does exist. I mean, it's, it's either Fantasma and, and uh, the creator just didn't, didn't, like, forgot to add the A at the end, or... <laughs> Although that would be funny if it was actually just Fantasma. Right. Uh, like apparently their the gimmick is that they're wrestling royalty, which, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, as, as, as I've said uh, in, in the text chat, the, or Damien Priest continues tagging with everyone else that is not 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 part of part of the Judgment Day. While well, the Judgment Day does not do, <laughs> does nothing, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> most recently. I've, yeah, go ahead. I've had a weird booking thing, and I was able to turn it off because you can edit the match card, but when I first started my universe, like, every week, there would be a mixed tag match. It would feature one guy from an actual tag team and some random chick. Yes, that is a problem for but, me, too. I am thinking about yeah. just, just removing mixed tag matches altogether. Yeah, that's what I did. So, <laughs> okay. um, when that was active, though, I would never have any actual tag teams doing tag matches. It would always be, here's a guy from a tag team doing a mixed tag. And, and then if uh, if there were actual tag team matches on the card, they were between wrestlers that weren't actually tag teams. <laughs> or see. like women wrestlers that weren't actually tag teams. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That, like, you know, my, my favorite team is Kane and Maurice. Yeah. <laughs> She's not even tag teaming with her husband. Yeah. That's the swerve. Maurice has been, <laughs> has been married to Kane all this time. <laughs> Miss has been a front. <laughs> Miss is a front to the marriage yeah. of Maurice and Kane. Uh, I also I also didn't get Michael Cole. Like I said, I still have to uh, to edit, edit his moveset so he doesn't fucking like uh botch botch us pretty much. Perfect. Like I am I am planning on make, making his moveset nothing but the the least safe moves that I can find. Because <laughs> I think that's funny, and I'm uh, once once I'm done with that, I'll also buy uh, Jerry the King Lawler and just have have them run a feud where Michael Cole kills him every week. <laughs> and then Lawler, Lawler retires because he's dead. I like it. Like I just, I just want Michael Cole to to burning hammer Jerry the King Lawler at WrestleMania. <laughs> I like it. I might also give give Cole a, a new outfit because whatever, fuck it. <laughs> just go 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 full with the with the feud and repackage him. Yeah. Register, regicidal Michael Cole. <laughs> uh, the new Kingslayer. Yeah. So yeah. I was gonna say, say something, something, something about one of the other dumb uh, stories that I get. Oh yeah, like Brock Lesnar is, I think, part time in the game. He came back to feud with Mysterio. He didn't leave because now he's feuding with Tajiri. <laughs> so who's the right killer, Brock Lesnar? No, he he keeps getting his ass handed to him. That's the funny part. <laughs> he he's having he's having these blood feuds with the, the with the cruiserweights and and losing. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. Like I, th- I think I've seen Rico lose less in, in my universe, but that's probably because Rico's only showed up twice. <laughs> Can't lose if you're not on the show. Yeah, the JTG method. Precisely. Uh. So yeah, like I have I have some fun with the game. It's just that, just that every every time I have a crash or something doesn't work. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, and like also like the one thing that really annoys me about the menu now, because of all of this. So correct me if I'm wrong. Every fucking thing you do in universe, other other places about, but but it, it's it's a lot lot of it, lot of it is in universe. Every fucking move you make, you take in universe. The game is like, are you sure you want to do this? I'm gonna save. That is a fact. Yeah, and then I and then I tell it, okay, save, and then do the do the stuff that I told you. And it doesn't, because whenever I crash, I have to redo a half an hour's work. Oh, at least, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. So not 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 only not only is the game stopping me in every, in every step step and making my life harder, it's also not doing the thing that it's supposed to, supposedly stopping me for. That's Brad. That, that's right. pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. That's Brad. Quite friendly. <laughs> Nobody likes Brad. Yeah. Oh, 
also one, one thing that I am uh disappointed by is to, so far is that is that Terry Funk has not been booked even though he's been a member of SmackDown for the entire universe. <laughs> he's been booked on a on a on a house show once, and that's it. That's terrible. Yeah. Like once I'll once I actually feel like doing stuff with Strength SmackDown, I will force the game to book him and then just run run the storyline of him coming back and dominating everyone and then leaving. <laughs> that, like the in, in the one match, he had a match against Xavier Woods. The match was was a, was a squash squash where he locked in the the fi- or not the figure four the the spinning the toe hold. Yeah, he yeah. The, he locked the spinning toe hold in, and since it's not a submission. The Woods didn't tap, but but he was knocked out from from the pain. <laughs> I like it. it well, why don't they make the spinning toe hold an actual submission? I know it sucks, but still, like it's a bad move, but still, why why not go with the gimmick at least? This is true. Hell, it it would be funnier if people could tap tap to it because it, it's such a nothing move. Yeah. Uh but yeah, that's 2K22. Uh, I redownloaded Kingdom Hearts because I had to delete it for 20, 2K22, and I just deleted something else to get to get space for both. <laughs> ah. I redownloaded Kingdom Hearts. Finally, uh, figured out the, the the problem I had with the guy not being where he's supposed to be. So I I will be able to make progress in that again, which is good. Yeah. And then I think that's all I played really. So I also did uh, did something uh, horrible. Uh oh. Pink. I watched AEW. Oh no, I think I'm going to have to ban you from this call. Understandable. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I watched the clips that, that Noah up- uploaded of, uh, of the Muta Chinsuke match. And I went, eh, okay. fuck it. I went, eh, fuck it, I might as well just look at what, what I whatever I can find. And then I found out, AEW uploads full shows <laughs> to YouTube. Well, like, I- it there it's are not... full actual dynamite shows. Or no, no, it... no. It they it's have dark, a... right? Yeah, it's dark. Yeah, but dark honest... elevation, whatever they call it. Yeah, honestly, I like this better because I don't have to see the box or Omega. This is true, and yeah, because <laughs> they they won't show up for the for the C show, but I do get to see the people that they don't use as much. Probably, I don't know. Like I still saw, I still a saw lot people. Of those guys, I think, aren't even on the roster. They getting. Paid on a per appearance basis, ah. if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, it's like a, you know, you, there might be some guys that are actually signed. Like I know they've been having Athena, formerly known as Ember Moon. Okay, I figured that, em, I figured that was Ember Moon. She 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 looked uh familiar. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like her. I don't like her gimmick in AEW because it's it's just like from from the name Athena. I figured that she'd be like Bat Phoenix. You know, like whatever fucking big strong woman that beats people up and that's her gimmick no yeah. chicken shit heal yeah kind of it's not great i mean it's just such like the the the, the two well, the, the one match that i saw from her was just like very underwhelming because it, it was a lot of nothing and running away which i mean you know chicken shit heal but still like the when, when she was getting in offense she wasn't getting in offense right i don't, I don't know how she did that so, some people just, you know, she's obviously not built to be the chicken shit heel. Yeah. She's bigger than most every other woman on the roster. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and then I also think that they might have put, like, the, the one measure I saw from her, I think it might have been a heel versus heel. Which is probably not a good idea. No, not usually. But but her opponent, I, I didn't didn't take notice of because uh, I don't remember her name. But there's this uh, there's this judoka woman who is uh, managed by Eddie or not Eddie, the Eddie Guerrero, his corpse. Eddie Guerrero's back in AEW. Yes, Eddie Guerrero is all elite. Eddie Guerrero's <laughs> zombie is all elite. No, Vicky Guerrero. 
Ah. And Vicky hasn't aged since since the early, the early 2010s. And I don't know how she does that. You're not wrong about that. Oh, also, like, I don't know why she, like, it's one of those things where, like, if if they call her name for like, you know, a, a, a Latino or Latina wrestler, I understand that because you know Guerrero. And if if they call her name for for uh someone doing like a frog splash, once again, I understand Guerrero. Why is she here again? <laughs> like, why is good she question. in AEW? <laughs> that's a that's a very good question because I I don't know how to how to answer that honestly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, the uh, the the woman that that she's she's um man managing, actually really fun with her gimmick. I mean, I'm assuming she she actually might be a judoka or, judoka or something. Although I don't know, some of the some of the holes that she did didn't look quite crisp. But then also, mm -hmm. but then also she's she's also wrestling, so you know, yeah. One thing that that I don't like is that I understand from a from a character standpoint, but I, I still don't like is her gimmick. Is, well, her her whole thing is that you know she's a proper actual athlete and whatever. I don't know why that means that she's barefoot, <laughs> but it, I don't like it. Put on some fucking shoes. You come in shoes. You put them down near the ring. Just wear them, please. <laughs> Like I'm gonna have to press X, X to doubt on, on on the whole like shoes would make my my feet weaker. <laughs> yeah, especially when the especially when one one of the the uh, spots in the Athena match was her looking in a, in a lock, and Athe Athena crushing her toes, which I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna assume might have might have been more secure in in a shoe, just maybe probably. Uh, but yeah. Aside from that, like she, she's not like a, a, she's not a great wrestler, but they her moveset plays around around a lot with with the whole you know submission specialist judoka thing that that they have going on for her, and that's yeah that's good. Like you know it's it's is it gimmicky? Yes, but I mean, look, it was big in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it works in the land of Terry <laughs> Funk, so it'll work here. Some somewhere in the sky, you know, Ki is proud. Yeah, uh, I'm forgetting. You know, you know, Ki brought brought in all of the MMA people to do MMA matches in the ring, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, like you know, gen genuinely though, like the she she has raised a ways to go before she's actually like a proper good wrestler, but but. The potential is there, and and she is different from the norm right now, which is to say that she doesn't do flips, and she's not Daniel Bri Daniel Bryan, which, <laughs> which 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 is big enough difference for me to to somewhat like her already. Yeah, that's a big enough difference to make her different from ninety five percent of everyone wrestling at the moment. So yeah, I can understand that. Uh, then speaking of flips. I saw Alistair again. Alistair Black? Yes. When did they bring him back? I thought he was like on the depressed reserve list or something. Oh, uh, they brought him back, I want to say, last week because the, the dog that I watched was from last week. <laughs> so. Ah. But yeah. He came back with with his whole whole team. I saw the match. I actually liked his team enough that I have them in in two K twenty two now because yeah, <laughs> nice. I was I the, the in the oh, no actually it was two weeks ago then because I, I watched two uh, two no that was no it it was this week because but but they had two darks or something like that because I watched two two episodes and in one uh. of them that test was on commentary and I don't I, I don't remember oh, no. who. It was actually good. Tez, Tez? Tez improved. Weirdly enough, Tez improved. I'm not sure I believe you. Well, Tez, it was Tez and Excalibur. And it, it, see, it, seems ah. that they, it seems that Excalibur might be bringing out the best in Tez. Ah. And then, comparatively, uh, the other one was uh, kind of a bad team, in my opinion. Because it was Big Show and a, a guy named Matt that I don't know. 
Okay. Allegedly, he's a wrestler, I think. Matt Stryker? No, I, I would I would, I would recognize, recognize Stryker. Okay. I, I was about to say, I, I always felt Matt Stryker was one of the best commentators on the independent circuit. So. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they even showed, showed the, the commentary table at, at a point. So, like, if, if, if not, not for his voice, I wouldn't, wouldn't recognize Stry- how Stryker looks, probably. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, 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 I know who you're talking about. Uh, Matt Reinhold. Maybe, which yeah. Would have been, which would have been uh, Aiden English in WWE. Oh, shit. Why was he so bad? That's a good question. No, I don't, I don't think it, it was him. I don't know, whatever. The, the point being that the guy... Actually, actually I don't think it, it should have been English then, because the guy was doing... Like, like, the guy spoke like he, he's from Brooklyn, if that helps. Hmm. I don't know then, because that doesn't really sound like English, but... Yeah, that, that doesn't sound English like... English so, from Brooklyn, and that just, no. I didn't think... Maybe he's doing a new gimmick, but I don't think so. <laughs> I'm actually going to take a moment to look this up. AEW right. Dark. Um, I'll assume it's their most recent ones that you watch, so I'll just yeah. skip through and see if I recognize the commentator. But yeah, so... Uh, they, they had Big Show and that, and that guy. And Big Show, bless his heart, actually tried to call the match, and the guy was shit and shit all over the commentary table. It was bad. <laughs> Oh no! Like the big show wasn't good. Don't 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 get me wrong, but at least he tried for the most part. It, it's just like you know, some, sometimes he, he just go, "Oh, Buddy Murphy." <laughs> yeah. Or like he he called uh Brody King Brody Lee. I don't know if Brody King is Brody Lee, but <laughs> Brody Brody Lee sounds familiar, but yeah. I don't think that's his name. Um. Actually, let me Google that up. Who's Brody Lee? Brody Lee, wrestler. Yeah, Brody Lee was uh, Luke Harper. Which yeah, I that, that's what thought I thought. Was... That, so... that, that, that's what I thought. That, that, that's weird then that Big Show called, called Brody King that. Yeah. Uh, e. Dark. Uh, but yeah, I also got to see Jack Swagger. He still sucks. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they, they're trying to protect him, I think, because he, he was in a gimmick match against a, against a jobber. And the whole gimmick was that he, that he doesn't like people taking his hat. But, right. like, but like, he's still Jack Swagger. He's not going to be great. Like, right. What, 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 what has Jack Swagger done good? The ankle lock, I guess. Yeah. I always liked Jack Swagger back in, uh, I'd say, around 2008 through 2011 before they buried him. But yeah, he's not not exactly a five-star main event player. Yeah, I mean, they, they, have, him in the, they have, to have him in the Jericho Appreciation Society, so I don't think they, they, they think he's a <laughs> main event yeah. player either. Nope. I've got to assume that the Jericho, Jericho Appreciation Society was pitched by Jericho. Because it, it sounds like something he'd pitch. Probably. Yeah, that, that's a very Jericho-centric uh, type of idea. And like, uh, I obviously don't see most of the uh, most of the main story stuff because the Dark, dark, star, the dark is, a, is a D show, so... Uh-huh. No real storyline progress here. It's, it's mostly just matches, which is fine. Like, genuinely, they're, they're, I was surprised that there were, there were... Shit, sorry. <laughs> so I was, surprised, I, su- I was surprised that uh, there were actual storyline progression stuff in, in these uh, shows. Because it's, it's, it's like heat. <laughs> yeah. Or what was the other one? The green one? Velocity. Yeah, Velocity. So googling up this thing, their their commentators are all over the place. It yeah. usually consists of Excalibur and somebody else. Sadly, Excalibur was not, not, not at the table when it was Big Show and the other guy. Right. 
Eventually, they added a uh, helico. I want to say. To commentary? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Like, the, dur- during the show, eventually, th- he just showed up. He was just at the commentary table. And they were like, hey, here's an, here's an helico. He's gonna help commentate this, this match because there's a luchador in it. <laughs> Fair enough. And then, literally, the, the, I, think, I think like a match or two later, he was like, all right, I have to leave now. And he, he's, he, his team came out. <laughs> okay, then. Holy crap, it's Willow. Like, Jeff Hardy Willow? No, I wish. That'd be awesome. Willow Smith? Willow Nightingale. Ah. Uh-huh. Which I think she actually signed with AEW recently. Uh. Big Cass? Yeah, the Big Cass. I saw, I saw him have a match. His name is Big Bill. Yeah, it is. Why? <laughs> it, he's big money, yo. Yeah, that's, that, that's why, uh, that's why the, the team most people remember him for, for his Enzo fucking just roasting him. Right. Uh, I'm glad Enzo isn't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is, but, but... <laughs> I'm glad Enzo isn't as well. <laughs> like I don't know what it is about that guy, but, but something wrong, 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 wrong way about him. His face. Yeah, probably. And then it, it's a shame that that W isn't here, but because because every time like I, I was I recently uh figured out because I, I have a problem with Matt Riddle, and I figured it figured it out. It's not anything anything like. Proper. It's just that I have the same same uh, reaction to Matt Riddle that he does to Heath Slater. I just don't want him on the screen. Uh, I want him gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see uh, Athena and em- uh, Ember Moon. Athena <laughs> and, and Ember Moon had a match, obviously. Uh, Marina Shafir was her yeah. opponent. I believe. Yeah, Marina She's Shafir. Marina. She was here. Marina is the wife of Roderick Strong, and she friggin' sucks, yo. I don't know. I saw saw some some stuff that she could she could do with the gimmick, but obviously she she also had to learn more. Yeah, she's very green, that's for sure. But like, if if she actually learns, like if she puts in the time, I think she, think she could actually learn how to do good matches. Cause like the the gimmick is something. It's a start, you know. Yeah. It's it's like Baller. Yeah. Like, like Baller had a, had a had a chance with with a good gimmick, and then bo- like both him and WWE just didn't. Right. Like it, it seemed, it seemed like at the start, it seemed, it seemed like he might actually give a shit, and then, then, then he was he was held back around that time. I want to say, and then then he got injured, and then both yep. bo- both of them just gave up. Both him and WWE. Yep. Like I, I I wish I I still wish that that he he did like a thing where that that's his mask skin and he just has a different move set or something. That would have been yeah. cool. Yeah. Like honestly, a, f- a funny thing that they, they could have done is, is have him do uh do the coup de gras when, when he when when he's his normal self and have him do the nineteen sixteen when when he's demon. Yeah. Or something like that. Like anything aside from nothing. <laughs> uh, but this yeah. Is, this, all these comments saying that Marina had the best match of her life in this episode so I, oh so is, is I that why i like her <laughs> yeah probably okay because <laughs> le- legitimately that match was pretty good i mean you know like it, it, it i watched it with the with the idea of well you know we'll, I'll, I'll see like i don't know who these people are so they may, may they might be new and then like i liked uh, dpw when, when what i what i watched when, when that was that had free shows yeah and i went into that going okay these, these people are going to be green probably and they were but but you know, just because the the wrestlers aren't like ring veterans doesn't mean that that you can see the promise that they they have. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's, that's that's why I'm. What, yeah, go ahead. That's what makes uh, local wrestling shows so much fun. Yeah. And th- that's why I like um. Uh, Kid Bandit. Right. And apparently, Kid they 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 were on AEW as well, which is fun, like funny for me, because I I saw their first match as far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then similarly, Takeshita, I know where Take know the Japanese uh, company that Takeshita's from. <laughs> like I've seen seen him, re I've seen him take a train a guy. <laughs> So it's funny seeing him wrestle against Brian and actually actually out wrestling. Like, well, okay, out wrestling is is a big big thing to say, but like he was more entertaining in that match than Brian, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, then then we get to the thing of oh, is it wrestling or sports entertainment? It's both. I mean, you right. watch you watch wrestling to be entertained, so. Yeah. Sports and entertainment, as the Rock would say. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where, like, I, immediately I kind of want to speak for everyone, but I genuinely can't. But, like, I watch wrestling because I want to be entertained and not not, be, not just because these people are great athletes, you know? Yeah. Like, if, if I just wanted to see great athletes, I could watch powerlifting. Or... Right. Or fucking just hockey. <laughs> but I... But, but, like... You know, g generally people don't burn camera at each other on on a on a hockey ring. Sometimes it happens. Not usually. Yeah. Sometimes it happens, Every but still. <laughs> <laughs> like hockey is genuinely the, the one other sport where that that might actually happen. Yep. Oh, uh, but yeah. Did I have any any other matches that that uh, I saw that were noteworthy? Cause I mean, like the a lot of lot of lot of these matches. Oh yeah, the, the I want to say Brian Cage, but I don't actually remember the guy's name. But this this buff buff guy with the mohawk, uh, came out and had a really good match against local talent. Mm. Then the 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 thing that that I was surprised by is AW puts over the local talent, not completely. Like you know, the the actual signed people still still go over. But it's it's not not uh, the stuff that I I grew to expect from WWE from the eighties where it's just like okay so we have this guy we have this guy here for for a, a day he's a local wrestler so he goes out and dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he leaves, <laughs> and we give him a paycheck. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, there's a guy I don't remember where they were, but a local wrestler called Chef. From wherever they were, and the opening match for one, for one of these dark episodes was Chef against I want to say once again Brian Cage, but I don't actually remember the guy's name. And Chef was a much more interesting wrestler. <laughs> I believe it. And Cage also did a good job of, uh, okay, <laughs> I, I just had a, a funny bug in the game. <laughs> where <laughs> I'm having I'm doing this thing against Orton. And Orton did the DDT, but he went to the turnbuckle to put the Sting through the through the ropes. So Sting is just sitting on the turnbuckle while he's, he does the DDT. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. That. Like, and I enjoyed that match because because it was a very good uh big man fight. They did they both of them did because both of them are roughly the same size and build. And they did, like, they actually, like, it was one of those things where, like, the cage guy, I think, uh, his whole thing is that he, he just, just because he's, he's a fucking a brick shit house doesn't mean that he's not that athletic. And Chef is general, generally just a brick shit house. So yeah. He actually, so he, they actually played around that, where Chef, Chef was the, the, power, the, the powerhouse of the match. And while the, the other dude, who was actually signed to AEW, while he also did some power powerhouse moves, he did more more high flying stuff, but not not actually high. Like it wasn't, it wasn't just you know like uh, it it wasn't uh, suicide dives and shit. I mean like Enzi Guris or whatever Enzi Guris, and yeah, uh, I think he might have done a hurricane run at one point. And it's it's like that shit. That, that I I like that stuff because it sells both of them. It sells that the other guy is bigger big enough for him to change how he wrestles usually. And it sounds that like the other yeah. guy is capable of actually doing the, these things. Yeah. And I, I remember Big Show because that was on on that episode. Uh, Big Show was like, "Man, I, I wish I could do shit, this shit." <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was his age, and I mean, he tried. If memory serves. Oh yeah, 
Big Show absolutely tried a lot of things that maybe at the time he shouldn't have been doing, but he did it anyway. Yeah. I also liked how um, Val, um, Val Alistair and, and his team were coming out. Uh, the other guy is like, uh, did, Paul, don't, don't you find these, guy, these guys scary? What, what, what would you do if they, they started, started uh, approaching the, the commentary table or whatever, something like that? And then Big Show just goes, I'd break your legs and run. The other guy goes, what? He just go, he goes, I don't need to run faster. I just need to run faster than you. <laughs> that was great. That was the that was the best spot. The best spot for the commentary. Yeah. That, that's that, that that shit is what what makes makes me um say that big show big show was good despite actually like this despite fucking up a lot with with the names and all that. But then also right. like with big show, I, had, I have to consider he's been in the WWE for how long? <laughs> like, and, and he's also wrestled with these people in the WWE. So it's it's like yeah. okay. So you know, I can't really blame him for calling uh Buddy Murphy Buddy Murphy when when his his new name is fucking uh Buddy Matthews. This his new name. Yeah, that's his new name. Or I also like I also like Aria Davari, who yeah now now he's just Ari Davari. Yeah, and the best part the the other guy who wasn't Big Show he called him Aria Davari. He announced the match. <laughs> he announced the match as. Next up, uh, I forget who, and Arya Dewari. <laughs> and Big Show didn't, didn't correct him. Uh. Oh yeah, Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy is in a, is a, is in a storyline that they, they're actually running on dark. It's weird. But, I can't believe it. But Matt Hardy is in a, is in a storyline where someone apparent, uh, apparently, uh, the, I don't remember the guy's actual name. Something called Ethan Page. There we go. That's his name. Yeah, Oligo yeah. Ethan Page. Uh, he has Matt Hardy's contract, so he is Matt Hardy's boss. There's also another guy that, whose contract he owns. He forces the the two of them, so so that so that they team with Matt Hardy. And the the two of them, the t- he, him and the other guy, make up one Jeff Hardy. And that's okay. the gimmick. Interesting. <laughs> like there's there's other other actual like storyline stuff where the other guy hates the hates Eden Page. Matt Hardy seems to have made peace with it, and all that. But, sure. But I just find it funny how both in the during the entrance and in move sets. Uh, what moves Matt does with either of them it legitimately just makes them two halves of Jeff Hardy. <laughs> so yeah, that that was also uh, that was also funny, and I I do like the the uh, the subtle subtle differences that that they do that where they keep Matt's normal move set, but they also adapt on it somewhat, so it's not just the normal. Stuff that you'd expect from Jeff if Jeff were, Jeff were there, mm. like like poetry in motion isn't a what whatever the fuck you want to call whatever Jeff Hardy does. <laughs> yeah, instead of that, it, it's it's a splash now because it's not it's not Jeff uh, Hardy doing it. Yeah, or there's also the the uh, like there's also this this gimmick they're running where. Eden Page, I don't know what his normal finisher is, but he's he's not been using that as a finisher. He's been using the, using the twist of fate because he owns Matt Hardy now. So I guess he owns the twist <laughs> of fate, fate too. <laughs> the twist of fate is now his intellectual property. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, like that. I it it was fun. I might look look into it further, especially especially as long as fucking the box or Omega doesn't show up. Yeah. Cause like I can enjoy this this wrestling, uh, and, and uh, whatever small amount of exposure I get to the storylines, like just because it's Omega's uh company doesn't mean that it's inherently shit. It's just whenever he's on screen. <laughs> yeah. It also doesn't hurt that, that that like most of the people that I knew that like like most of the people that I saw a very small bit of at the end of where I, when I watched wrestling are now in AEW. So. Yeah, because like I saw Big Cass and Enzo Amore. I saw, uh, what well, what was the name of Buddy Murphy and the other guy, their team? Uh, it would have been Buddy Murphy and Wesley Blake. 
Oh, yeah. Didn't they? Didn't their team have a name? Not really. They were referred to as BAMF. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah, BAMF. Yeah. The Blake and Murphy factor. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. Like, I, I remember them. I remember them getting, getting called up, but I don't think I ever, ever actually saw them wrestle. Or maybe, like, a match. The who? Banff. Yeah. And then, uh... Who else was around that time? I don't know. But it's, like, the the, the people that I still know that, that are in the WWE, like, most of them, are people that I didn't like when I knew them. Because, <laughs> like, The Shield. <laughs> right. And... Well, technically, technically, fucking Joxley is in AEW, but I don't have like he, he's also on the main show, so I don't have to see him. Yep. Like this is this is the this is this is the good thing about about Dark that I, that I literally just just said, but whatever, I'll, I'll say it again because it, I, I find it funny. There are like the the main players in AEW I generally don't like, but because I I don't watch the main shows, I don't have to see them, so it works out. <laughs> it's just yeah. such a funny thing to me that this some, somehow works. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. Hmm. Do you have anything else to say about AEW? Not really. Well, Noah, I watched Muda's semi uh, second to last match. Oh yeah, that's why I that's why I uh fucking went over to AEW to see 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 if Muda's last last match had happened, but it it hasn't yet. Muda Muda's gonna have one last match against Sting on AEW. Okay. But yeah, so I watched the Noah Shinsuke, the actual American American person, Shinsuke Nakamura, against Great Muda. <laughs> it, it was surprising. For American citizen, Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. It was surprising because Shinsuke came out to his WWE team. Oh. And everything. Like, they, 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 gave, they loaned everything. Like, it, it wasn't just Shinsuke, it was Shinsuke... The guy who does the violin violin part to Shin- Shinsuke's team on, on the pay per views. Yeah. And they they could also name job WWE. That's nice. Yeah. And I didn't see a lot of the match because they, they hadn't uploaded the whole match because I mean yeah. <laughs> and then there's some, some, some subscription stuff that they have set up that you can watch watch it on, but I'm not paying it. Yeah. Like I'm I'm not paying to watch Shinsuke Nakamura with a wrestler. I I don't watch him for free. <laughs> I I tried to watch the Great Muda wrestle, but not Shinsuke Nakamura. Yep, that's fair. But yeah, they 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 upload the highlight highlights video or whatever highlight video, just the one. Yeah, <laughs> that was a part part of the uh, of the match. And they had some interesting spots that I that I saw, but it was a lot lot of like. It is it's a lot of Shinsuke Nakamura being Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura and the Great Muda being ancient. <laughs> and Great Muda being old. Yeah. And somehow the Great Muda still wrestled wrestled around Shinsuke Nakamura. Despite being ancient. <laughs> like, you know, there there were things where you could tell that he that Muda couldn't move anymore because because he does he just doesn't have the fucking the uh, uh, the muscles for it anymore. Yeah. But like, I don't know if the like the Kamura was probably playing it up. But a lot, a lot of the match was the match. The, the highlight that they showed was just lying on the ground, and it wasn't ah. Muda. It wasn't Muda. Like you know, I I figure they they'll do like Muda is old. They'll do a spot where they knock each other out, and then they just catch. They let Muda catch, catch his breath and then continue. But Muda, right. Muda got up. <laughs> they also had a, um, a a spot where Shinsuke Nakamura kissed Muda on the mouth and sucked the uh, the mist out of his mouth to then use, use against Muda. Yeah, I heard about that spot. And then I, I, I was like, wait, what? Well, isn't Japan supposed to be like super homophobic? And then I remembered, oh wait, never mind, it's TV, it's it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I remembered. Then I remembered. Oh yeah, uh, 
New Japan did have that that fucking that, that hardcore match where they had the wrestlers act like they're fucking each other because it was in a, <laughs> it, it was in a love hotel. Oh no! Yeah, like I I I didn't see the actual match, but I I saw I I, don't, I forget what it was in, but it, I saw it in, in like a clip compilation of of hey here's here's New Japan's greatest moments or something like that. Yeah. And I, like at this point, I'm not sure if, if that was supposed to be a, a, a sarcastic thing or not. <laughs> uh, but yeah. No. Uh, well, I also I also saw Fist King. What is that? Uh, Kano. I don't know why, but if if you translate when 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 while looking up uh, stuff about the uh, the Muna match, I had to translate the Noah side because it's in Japanese, and uh, for whatever oh. reason, Kano is translated as Fist King. Okay. So that's that's just the name I call him. And Kano is is uh either is or was the uh the champion I for I forget. They did a very unsafe spot. So oh, imagine no. so imagine being the Falcon Arrow. Okay, now imagine okay. the now imagine the Falcon, Falcon Arrow being down from from the the top rope. Ooh. Okay, now imagine the Falcon Arrow, arrow being down, down down from the top rope to the apron. That yeah, that doesn't sound. All that was the spot. That was the spot. Ooh. Yeah. Like the 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 highlight of that match is just that spot, and then the guy he's fighting. Fucking sell, selling like mad, and I'm not sure how much of that was selling, honestly. <laughs> Cause, like, you know, <laughs> uh, I I hope I remember which move the Falcon Arrow is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check. Give me a sec. Because, like, it, 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 there's a very, like, it, it was either that or a Michinoku driver. But the two the two are very similar in, similar in my head. Yeah. Falcon Arrow is kind of that suplex into a Michinoku driver, whereas a Michinoku driver is kind of a scoop slam driver. Okay, yeah, I believe it was a Falcon Arrow then. Yeah. So, yeah, like, the... <laughs> like, the... I I like Japanese wrestling sometimes. Like it, I like okay, I like Japanese wrestling in the video games sometimes. I have actually yet to see <laughs> I have actually yet to see a, a full match that I, I, I enjoy completely. But but I just usually just chalk that up to either I'm not watching the right era because most most of the Japanese wrestling stuff that I see is modern and the style that I like is more like late nineties, mid two thousands. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of matches from Japan that feature, you know, like super old Japanese wrestling with like Benoit, Jericho, Dynamite Kid, several yeah. of the Tiger Masks. So a lot of that earlier stuff, but I I don't keep up with the modern Japanese wrestling because a lot of it is very uh, samey to me and none of the characters are really up my alley in any way. So... I mean, yeah. my, my my problem is that like I've tried to get into New Japan multiple times, and every time it's just like the matches are whatever. Like so, sometimes they're they're all right, sometimes they're not. But I want to get into New Japan to see the Japanese talent, so that I I can be like so so when I, when I hear people talk about oh this this guy who has the same same last name was all, all like five other wrestlers in the past five years. Yeah, this guy is good. That, that I know which guy they're referring to. Right. And then again, this is a problem with, with, with uh, wrestling in the, re- in the West as well. <laughs> like, you, you, you tell me you like Matthews. All right. That can be like 30 people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many Matthews there are in wrestling? Yeah. Oh, uh, but yeah. So anyway... Like you know, I just I I want to see see like that stuff and like what what the Bullet Club 
like what, what the Bullet Club is because I still haven't seen it, despite knowing like four wrestlers that are in it or were in it, uh huh, and stuff like that. And whenever whenever I try to watch New Japan, it's just like it's just like all right. So we have this random goober from the West that you don't know. He is headlining everything. <laughs> yeah, and, and I just tune out. Because, like, yeah. if, I, if I want to see Goobers from the West, I can watch WWE. Right. Uh. You know, I, I was going to joke about getting getting into... Uh, I was going to make, make a joke about maybe getting into AAA or something. But then I don't, I don't want to see Sin Cara. And he, he might still be out there. <laughs> oh, he's definitely still out there. Both of them now. Oh no, is it Unico? Is Unico yeah. in Triple A? Yeah. Oh no. You got Sin Cara, you got Unico, you got Sin Cara's little brother. Oh. I think they might even have a cousin. Yeah. There are Sin Caras everywhere. I don't, they're, not, they're all just different colors of Sin Cara. Yeah, they're like, like a Power Rangers lineup. Yeah, like Unico, Unico uh, retained the, the green or the blue color scheme, even, even though that was for the original. Yeah. Then the the original is still still Azul. Oh, that, that, that's that's blue shit. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> the, <laughs> no, it, the one of them are blue, but one doesn't have the dots. That there you go. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, then there's Sinclair Blanco. Yeah, which is also just Julio really Rico <laughs> from that one match. Like instead of, instead of instead of getting everyone getting getting gear, they just got Julio to deliver all of the gear the gear that he he got, got made while while in the WWE. Yeah. So like there there's like there's the black black outfit. There's the there's the blue outfit. There's the blue outfit with the dots. There's the uh. There's the white outfit. Did he have any other colors? Uh, when he was teamed with Callisto, they went through a few colors. They were prominently green, though. Huh? So, yeah. Uh, so... So, I think that's, that's it for wrestling. And that might be it for what I've done, I think. Because... I didn't really read, read any, any any other books. Did I draw? I don't remember. So maybe. Yeah. All right. W has no no notified us that notified us that he might be coming on. So, yeah. All right. So now we got a stall. Yes. All right. I'm gonna look look through the, the stuff and see if I wait. Actually, I can check it, check easier. I don't remember how to do that. Shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, the stuff that I did. Uh, the draw I posted in the, in the art thread, so would have already seen it, probably. Yeah, I I saw that. What was that drawing? The abstract computer drawing or whatever. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that has words on it. I I saw there were letters, but I couldn't decipher it. I, <laughs> cause I I went uh I don't know why, but I uh just figured I'd go for a for a. Like a lava lamp bladders look from like from the seventies. Uh, yeah. It it's a stream over. Ah. That makes sense. I kept trying to read it as game over because that made the most sense in my brain, but I was like, these words clearly don't say game. Yeah. So a stream over makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, there, there is a thing going on in my drawing pro program, which, by the way, like, 
uh with the with the changes that they've made to the to the uh what's my the license it's it's a lot it, it's uh, no, not not as great technically but it's still a full, fully featured thing so whatever uh yeah I'm, I'm saying this because honestly if you want to dedicate a drawing software then then i don't i can't please tell you about the better one <laughs> Like they are right now, they 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 have they have a thing going on where because they changed the I guess because I guess it's because they changed the licensing stuff that they're now just sometimes giving away premium currency for free. Oh, like right now it's a thing of if you if you log into the to the app, uh, every day. Well, you know it's not even every day. If you just log into the app, uh, then it it tallies up the days that you had and then gives you an, an X amount of credits. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then it, I think it, it, it ran for it ran for at most uh, twenty four days. I will definitely not get not get that. But I think if you log in for like ten days, then it, then you get a hundred, which is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like there, there's a lot of a uh, lot of brushes and stuff like that. That's like ten to put it into perspective. Right. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure how much it costs. But it it, uh, it it might be like I don't know how how much it's having to erase with with uh, with with, uh, with with the fuck with the white brush bothers you. <laughs> I don't either. Uh, le- 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 legitimately, legitimately, if the if the thing doesn't cost too much, then you might need to. Or actually, you do have a Wacom tablet, right? Wacom. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. I say whack'em. Like whack-a-mole. Oh uh, yeah, whack'em. But yeah, if you know, I don't know how it is, but you might uh if if you make a whack'em account that you might be might be eligible to get the uh, get the software for free, which which, which is why I ha- I have it. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Like if if you go into the into the thing then it, uh, I don't know how it is for you for me it, it's always like hey, you can claim free software. Just sign in. So I just ah. I did that. And then you get to choose if you uh, what software you want, and one of, one of them for me, uh, that I th- I think believe should be a part of your thing as well, but it's it's de- it's dependent on the type of uh, tablet you have. But one of the I things see. one of the things was just a pro account or a pro license for this software, and mm. that gives you everything for when it comes to drawing, and then and then it's only animation that that you can't do, but like, how much are we going to animate? Probably not a lot, if yeah. at all. Like it sucks for me because I want to get into animation eventually. And this makes it even harder, but then, you know. Yeah. Okay, I'll just do it like Disney. <laughs> I'll just rotoscope or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Oh yeah, and what I was uh, trying to bring out from all of this is that, that I've been I've been getting a lot more a lot more brushes again. I just have like I have too many brushes. I don't use ninety percent of my brushes because <laughs> usually I get stuck with like one that I like the look of, and I just use that. And then I have a bunch of texture brushes and stuff like that that uh. I that I usually don't use. <laughs> But then, like, also, like, I've been trying, like, since uh, I have, I figured I have enough, um, proper, um, what you call it, proper, like, pen brushes and stuff like that. I figured, hey, maybe I'll look into getting uh, proper painting brushes so I can learn how to paint digitally. Right. I got the paint brush, painting brushes. I don't know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> like in theory. Uh, in theory, I could do stuff with the coloring with these stuff with, with these things, but I I just don't think I understand. I I it's still the same problem I have I've had before. Where like I don't don't think I understand the basics of how you're supposed to approach this, even though I technically know how you're supposed to approach this. So I don't know what the problem is. Like, I understand that you're 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 supposed to build up the layers and then use color blending and all that, and just you know do that stuff. But then, then whenever I try to actually paint something, then it's the uh, it's the one scene from Simpsons where 
Homer, uh, Homer, Homer is trying to build a uh, a swing set for the kids, and then ah, and then got, got to got to the swing set and it looks great, and he goes ah perfect, and he brings the, brings down the the picture from from the instruction manual. Why doesn't mine look like that? Yeah, and then it's just it's just a mess. And that's that's me whenever I paint. <laughs> like I, I, you can see that effort was put in. It's just not there. I'm not sure why. <laughs> uh, so yeah. But if you, if you do do have a free license to this stuff, then tell me and I can point you towards a couple of good brushes. Most well, of the dude. most of them are free, as well. So nice. Oh yeah, although one thing that I that you might be able to uh, well, I actually don't know, because this is a very like digital art related, related thing that I was I, I want to ask. But you're not you're, you're not 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 as experienced with digital art as you are traditional. So yeah. But one of the issues that I've been I've been running into is the brushes that I that I get don't seem seem to be sized for uh for my aspect ratio. Is the best way I can put it. As in, uh, even though I try to draw draw things in four K, it seems it seems like the brushes are still too big. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not sure how to remedy this because because I try to keep the brushes somewhat similar to the the size that they came because sometimes if if you make it make it too big or too small then it, it just loses its purpose is the best way I can put it like it, it just yeah. doesn't really fulfill what it was made for and it also just looks bad yeah but also if I try to use them at the size that the size that they are they take up a good chunk of a of a 4K canvas and that's bad because my pc can barely handle drawing in 4k sometimes so right huh. <laughs> uh, how do i send you a picture of this i don't think i can while, while we're recording <laughs> uh, i have to make a picture of this too What uh, is it a picture of? I had I had a funny matchup again. Nice. It's it's a uh, Goldberg and Justin Gabriel against Otis and Chad, Chad Gable, but Chad Gable is also Goldberg. What? Yeah. <laughs> Explain that, idiots. <laughs> I also had a good match where uh, Rey Mysterio fought against uh, his greatest enemy yet, Rey Mysterio, accompanied by Paul, by Paul Heyman. <laughs> Wait, say that again? Rey Mysterio he... had a match against, yeah. against Rey Mysterio. Okay, so I'm not hearing things. It was Rey versus Rey. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 and the thing is, it was the same Rey. I, it, I, don't, have, I don't have the alternate Rey Rey's enabled. So it, it 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 was it was current Ray fight, fighting current Ray, who is also accompanied accompanied by Paul Heyman. It's just confusing. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, the, the like I wish I had more more of these funny glitches at least. <laughs> Instead of the constant crashes, that would be and... preferable to crashing every. Other menu. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like I did something else. I don't actually know what. <laughs> All right. Well, whatever. Indeed. I'm going through my uh, CAWs, my personal CAW that is supposed to represent me, even though it doesn't uh, yeah. look quite like me. Oh, I, did. I, didn't, I, sure didn't, even, I didn't even really bother making, making my CAW look like me, because fuck 
dealing with the face morph. Yeah, I feel like in 2K22, the face morphing is not great. The face photo face capture, it's not great. I I thought it was fairly decent in 19 and 18. Uh, 20 was a massive step backwards because it had all kinds of issues at launch. And then it got buffed out to a point where it was slightly more usable. But 2K22, it just doesn't feel that... I don't know. It doesn't. It's not that great. Not not in comparison to a nineteen eighteen, which I had like no problems with. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Someone still has their sound notifications turned on. Oh no. Yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? I I, I turn everything off, so everything's always a surprise. <laughs> And yeah, then, and that is that is that is why we can't ping you when 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 you forget you forget that it's some Saturday. Words. This is true. I just have it turned off so it's funnier whenever the bot comes in with a sound bite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I have let the sleep schedule thing get out of control here. I need to fucking bring it in. Yeah. Anyways. What what were y'all in the middle of saying before I so rudely interrupted? I was talking about the CW uh, suite in 2K. Ah, that's true. Ah. Oh yeah, W, you missed it. I watched AEW. Ah, <laughs> uh, like just an episode of Dynamite or? Blue Black, or not Black, uh, Dark. <laughs> AEW Black. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, Dark. Because they, they, they have a full oh, oh, shows. Oh, you son of a bitch. I enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed it a good bit because it, it didn't have Kenny Omega. Or the Young Bucks. That is... That <laughs> is true. And I only saw, I only saw Jack Swagger once. So... Oh boy. With his yeah. hat. Yes. Uh, how did this happen? Uh, I did see, um, apparently, uh, wrestler who, who sucks. I think you, you know her name? Marina Shafir. Yeah, Marina Shafir. Oh, boy. You don't know her. I don't. <laughs> you don't, you don't know her. No. You don't know her. You don't know her. <laughs> you don't know her. Anyways. But yeah, she, she apparently had the, had the match of her life, which is the one that I saw. So I actually was like, hey, oh, no. she's, she's not horrible. She's green okay, as fuck, but she's I not horrible. To... Yeah. So when Dark first came around, it was le like legitimately embarrassing uh, crap wrestlers. Is the point of Dark Elevation to get all the really embarrassingly bad guys off of Dark? It seems like it, because it, 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 uh, the matches that I remember watching were like actual, actually somewhat named wrestlers against local local wrestlers that, that knew what they were doing. And uh, like some storyline advancing stuff with, with like uh, Alistair Black and Matt Hardy. Ah, that's what they're doing. Hey, Alistair Black and Matt Hardy makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Man, Matt, Hard Matt Hardy's grand gimmick is funny because apparently someone owns him, but also the people owning him is forcing him, forcing him to be in a trio tech team, and 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 the reason 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 that they have the trio tech team is so that the other two guys can make Jeff Hardy. <laughs> oh, it's... the reason he's in a trio tag team is so there's someone who can job to the elite other than Death Triangle now. Yeah. Uh, but like, I I, I definitely found it funny how. Both in move set and in, in the entrance, the the two other guys accompanying accompanying Matt Hardy. One of one of them, his owner, by the way, make up one Jeff Hardy. Uh, and this this, this well, seems the deliberate. Well, the big fans. And this seems deliberate. Is the thing. Jesus. Like the 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 uh, the guy who owns Matt Hardy. Goes out of seem, seem to go out of his way to do uh, Jeff taunts during the during their entrance, and does the street the twist of fate. That, yeah, is that not a little mean spirited while Jeff's going so through go, going through such a hard time in his life? Probably he's always going through a hard time in his life. That's true. <laughs> that is kind of true. <laughs> well, hey, this time Matt didn't set his house on fire and kill his dog. 
<laughs> that was nice of him. At least. Written understanding now. I it's hate you, after. Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like the 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 guy that owns Mad Mad is doing Jeff's stunts and and the twist of fate, and the other other guy does poetry in motion and and the, and the swan tone. Oh my god! Yeah. So, it's it, it, it's it's kind of a funny funny get up they have where genuinely the other two guys make one Jeff Hardy. <laughs> and at least they're black. Like, he's okay. <laughs> they did a good job selling him oh, and, and, and his team. And the match wasn't bad either. Are they? Yeah. I thought, hey, hasn't AEW just consistently failed to make any use of Aleister Black at all? Yes. That's why he's on Dark. Yeah. What? <laughs> he's got Buddy Murphy and Brody King, and I'm sure yeah. Buddy Murphy would rather be working in the company with his girlfriend and his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> What do you though? Well, I mean, eh. <laughs> all I know about Brody King is he's a fucking dork and he's friends with Danhausen, which uh, I think you really have to be one. Of, you have to be one to be the other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw Danhausen post his post that he was in in the in his Homer outfit on on our show recently. And I was like, "Huh, cool." And then I then I was watching Dark, and it, it was the show where he, he was dressing dressing up as Homer. <laughs> <laughs> so that was funny. By the way, apparently Danhausen is the top merch seller in AEW. Over I'm not Punk surprised. It. He's the Joker, baby. I, <laughs> I I love Danhausen, but over Punk and MJF. Are they still selling Punk merchandise? In 2022, at the very least, he outsold Punk. Cool. Oh, really? Good. <laughs> Justice. <laughs> Justice. <laughs> Get outsold, Goober. We've got this Ring of Honor dork outselling all your merchandise, even though he just came back from a career-threatening injury of... I don't know. Like, not only this Ring of Honor Goober, but, like, this comedy guy who is absolutely just normal person sized in every way and not like a pr not a imp particularly impressive acrobat or technician. Uh -huh. Yeah, that the, the match with then I think that that was the match against uh, Malakai and and someone else. But then then the Denhausen match was very funny because the I don't I forget what happened with the Oh yeah. There there was inf interference from Denhausen to uh, to delay the ref, and then he just started punching people in the dick, and he still lost. Yeah, I think that's. I think Danhausen's gimmick is the low blow nowadays. Yeah, he caught it the curse. Okay, that's not the curse. Okay, that that's the what the curse that's... is the part. Yeah, the curse is the part where he points at them first. Ah, okay. Because while, while, while he was punching people in, in the dick, the commentators, including Big Show, <laughs> mm. that, that 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 was oh a my... that was a that Are, wasn't a wait a show. second. Yeah? Big Show is a com is a commentator on Dark. Everyone is a commentator on, on Dark. Sometime, uh, one of the episodes, one of the episodes was Big Show and some other guy named I think Matt that I, that I didn't like that I that I don't remember their name. And then like Nick. Big Show would just bury all the new guys. Like, is like the clips I've heard of Big Show in AEW, he just sounds like an asshole. Oh yeah, some of, sometimes yeah. <laughs> I definitely. I mean, the, the 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 best part of the commentary for that show was when uh when Alistair was was coming out, the House of Black was coming out, and the other guy was like. So Paul, if they started approaching the uh, approaching the the arms table, what would you do? And he just replies, "I'd break your legs and run." The other guy goes, "What?" And he goes, "He goes, I don't have I don't have to run fast. I just have to out out run you." That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that was a that was a good reply. I like that. 
I thought Dark was uh, so they if they cycle it, that would make cycle the teams that would make yeah, sense. And then, I thought then, Dark was still uh, Taz and Excalibur. The other the other one was, and that was that was a good good one. Like genu genuinely, it seems like Excalibur might be bringing out the, the good announcer an announcer from Taz. Uh, Taz and Excalibur are a hilarious commentary team. There is a very legitimate rapport between them that I would not have guessed because boy, are those two very similar, uh, two very different men. You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like the, the, the Taz and Excalibur one, uh, the, the, that show was a fun to watch just because of their commentary. Because they, it was like it, it was just fucking two two guys shooting the shit and also calling matches. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know about them as like a team I'd actually want calling a serious match, but Taz and Excalibur are hilarious because they will just say anything. I mean, that's and the thing. Sometimes they, they just get bored. I mean, that's the thing. Like, the, there was only. I want to say that the the only one where they they just started joking around was the Matt Hardy match, and aside from that, they called most of like most all all of the other matches down the middle, properly. <laughs> like I, I was I was surprised that Taz could could actually like call matches. <laughs> Without Michael Cole corralling him, yeah. Uh, it, it it would be funny if some somehow like <laughs> I don't know how I don't think they they could do this, but it would genuinely be funny if if Cole just fucking jumped in the, the barricade one day. Give me that fucking what, microphone. Beating up Excalibur. <laughs> no, just he takes the third one. <laughs> I think Tony Schiavone is usually supposed to be the third one for the for that uh, duo, but he's asleep. Uh huh. He's old. Yeah. He's not really looking at it. He's just bored. <laughs> Shivani just sounds like he's mildly amused by what's going on on screen most of the time. <laughs> the trouble is, having a three-man booth, there are all kinds of times where the manager or, or a tag team comes out to sit there with the team, and you end up with four or five men at the booth. And it's just pan it's just pandemonium. Yeah, uh, I did like how in the in the big show one, the the big show show, <laughs> the big show yeah. squared. Yeah. So, uh, in, in that that one, they realized that the the, the commentary team wasn't great. So eventually, they, eventually they just they just sent out an helico, I think, <laughs> to be a third a third announcer. Is an hel helico not English? Sounded no. like it, but I'm not Hang sure. Hang on. AEW has a luchador who's actually English. Give me a second. Hang on. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Uh, and Helico is South African. Okay. His real name is Adam Breedle. Now, I, the reason I know that is because I watched a uh, Jim Cornette clip because he is usually my uh, way of keeping track of AEW, though. I try not to listen to him too seriously, because he's kind of an idiot and then an old fart. But anyways, he, uh... At one point, they're talking, apparently, AEW is now putting together a Spanish commentary team, and it's Angelico and one other guy who is not Mexican or Spanish. So naturally, Cornette, you know... Goes, ah, bullshit, you fucking fuck, you fucking need a fucking actual fucking Spanish dude to fucking commentate your fucking Spanish show. Fuck. But then they play a clip of Angelico speaking Spanish at a show, and Angelico speaks the most remarkably perfect rapid-fire Spanish. He sounds legitimately like a native Mexican. And it was just great to hear Cornette goes off on his usual Cornette fucking fuck business and then immediately be annihilated by a voice clip he plays on his own show. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they, they added an, an, an helico to the, to the team. Uh, and, and then he, he did a good job calling the matches. Like it, After that point, it, it, the, the third guy wasn't there. It was an helico and, and Big Show calling the matches. The, the third guy just Wait, shut up. An, yeah. If Angelico and Excalibur call a match together, are both of them sitting at the commentary desk wearing match masks? No, and Angelico didn't wear a mask. I was surprised. Oh, weird. hasn't worn a mask in years. I don't oh. know that Aver did. Oh. 
All right, then. Am I getting Angelico visually confused with Bandito? Probably. Ah, uh, yeah, Probably, maybe. Probably, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that was the other match that, that I was surprised by. I'll, I'll come back to that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and Helico comes out, calls a couple of matches, and then he's like, all right, I gotta, gotta leave. And then he, his team comes out. The team he's managing. Managing? I thought he was a wrestler. Apparently, I know very little about Angelico. Yeah, he, I think he's a wrestler, but he's also man managing, right. uh, managing a team of Luther and Everybody's someone else. managing a team in AEW. Yeah. But yeah, he, he's, man he's managing a team with Luther, I think. L Luther and someone else, and, and their name is Spanish, Spanish Announce Project. Oh, right, the ripoff of Spanish Announce Team. Right, and there was a whole beef there. Yeah, I remember that. Luther still has a job? For some reason. How odd. He has to do something without the Dark Order. <laughs> but the Dark Order is still around. They tried to they, they tried to get um I don't remember. Uh the juice. Not Hoovy. Juice Robinson. Well the Dark Order has to exist, Addy, to hold back the power of Luke Harper's child. He's too strong without them. Ah. Uh, hmm. I, I will say, I don't know if they... I imagine that they can't handle it well at all, and it's probably just stupid. But I do find the funny, the idea funny that the Dark Order is actually led by Luke Harper's son. <laughs> <laughs> this child is sinister. I only saw, I only saw one, uh, one skit with the, with the Dark Order, where they tried to uh, recruit Juice Robinson. And the entire thing, because... I think that's his name. Whatever, the the guy the guy's nickname is Rock Hard, so the entire skit was dick jokes, and then nice. and then the guy the guy told them to go fuck themselves and then left. <laughs> it's a good skit. weren't weren't Dark Order supposed to be like a serious invading stable at some point? Probably, if they ever were, then not anymore. Like, wasn't there some show? That it was just like thirty dudes doing a run in wearing Dark Order masks. But yeah, that, that's why I'm, that's why I'm calling them the Dork or, Dork Order. Because <laughs> whoever, yeah. whoever whoever called them that first had a point. Uh, I think that's <laughs> Cornet. I feel like it's either Cornet or like Jericho. That, that that sounds like a Jericho thing to do. That Jericho now isn't the Jericho of our day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The, the Jericho now, so somebody somebody gave him the Shibata treatment. <laughs> they replaced his brain with Hogan's. That would make sense. <laughs> oh, boy. Just wait, just wait until... That's uh... actually what saying paper was about. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's what Judas is about. What are you on about? Oh. <laughs> Don't get in my mind. <laughs> Hogan is the ultimate Judas. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, ben Bandito also fought uh, Christopher Daniels. And I was like, hey, I know Christopher Daniels. <laughs> I am consistently surprised that Christopher Daniels is still wrestling. Yeah. He's was, been you know, around forever. Is he not 50-something now? Or older? Man, I was so disappointed to find out he was one of the Kenny Omega young buck friends that went into Punk's uh, locker room. I was so disappointing. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I saw him and I went, all right, they're putting him over. No. <laughs> no? This, this, was his, this was both of these guys' big return, by the way. So. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, I was surprised that they, they didn't put him over because, you know, the box. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is true, but I think Christopher Daniels is generally a respectful older guy who's probably more interested in putting young guys over. And on top of that, you said it was Luther he was going against, right? No, no, Benito. 
Bandito. Okay, Bandito. I think they've been trying to get over since they brought him over from AAA. Ah. Uh. Now, knowing how fifty-fifty booking goes, and knowing that Tony Khan wants to keep everybody in the company happy, it won't work because Bandito's never going to really get over because he can't really beat anyone because nobody wants to be beaten. But hey, everyone who's actually humble in the company is going to get fed to him. So yeah. You know. Yeah, he's trying to let they let him to, to that triangle to make that square, and then they'll they'll jump. <laughs> yeah, and they'll they'll still jump jump to Kenny Omega alone. Yeah. How does one do a one winged angel to four men at the same time? We don't know, but Kenny Omega will book it. Yeah. <laughs> Just fucking like I'm imagining Kenny Omega handing them a script for the match, like like some wrestlers do, and it just it just says. Screen, 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 Psycho Crusher. What do you mean, Kenny? Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, but anyway. Yeah, like, I, I liked some of the matches. I liked some, some of the wrestlers that I saw. So I, I got some, some of them for, for 2K, 2K22. Yeah. And I might actually like watch uh, some late, some later episodes because like it, it, it's a thing of like I might g give it give it a look if if I feel like feel like rushing, watching wrestling because it's the it's the uh, most wrestling I can watch for free. <laughs> but also the second the second the second Omega or or the Young Bucks show up, I'm gonna turn it off. Hey, I I'm not sure that Omega would show up. Not not to ever praise anything about Omega, but I want to say Omega does try to treat himself like somewhat of a star. <laughs> yeah, it seems to check out. Like the, like the good thing about good thing about about dark, is that I don't have to be afraid that I will see, uh, Daniel Bryan, Omega, the Young Bucks, or Joxley. So that's a plus I for mean, me. Daniel Bryan's all right. Yeah, I, I saw him have. I have saw. I saw uh, like half of a match or whatever. Like you know, so, some some parts of a match that he had recently, and it it was just the same shit he's been doing in WWE for the past twelve years. I don't need more of that. Oh, the, the gerbil wrestling. Yeah, like I, I liked Daniel Bryan before he had a character, and then he got a, yeah. he got he got a character and started wrestling every match the same way. And it's the that, that that's the same thing that I disliked about Cena. So I don't like don't like Brian either anymore. Well, to be honest, I think with Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan's became become one of those cases where there are some people who interest him and make him want to wrestle a good match because, like, he put on a great one with Drew Gulak a few years ago. But if he's going into a match against some guy who he doesn't give a shit about or who bores him or is a lazy wrestler, he's just gonna do gerbil drop kicks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, oh, I think you're on. you're onto something there. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Like once again, I I haven't seen seen him have a good match since he got a character. But you know. Yeah, but like you, it was what was it? Elimination tw Chamber twenty nineteen, Pink. Um, I think Gulak and Brian were. 2020? No, I think Brian left in 2020, so it would have been, would have been yeah, Elimination Chamber 2019. Yeah, because it, it wouldn't have been COVID when uh, yeah. and Gulak had their match. Like, damn, Brian still can do it, but I think he reached the point every wrestler has to of, if I put everything into every match, I'm going to die young. Right. You know, are, are we getting Randy fucking Orton tonight, or are we getting Headlock Orton? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, cause like with some wrestlers, at least even even when they don't give as much as much of a shit, the matches can still be good. No, and... you know who's probably the worst example of just switching to being just jerking off in most of their matches? Who? Shinsky. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I didn't think you meant literally. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I have yet to see a good Shinsuke match, including including the one I watched that was supposed to be good. Eh. Like I, I watched him have a match uh, against AJ, 
in New Japan. And people say, said that that, that that was like a great match of Shinsuke's. It was a match. It was a great match for Shinsuke. I mean, if, if, if that was a great match for Shinsuke, then shit, dude. Yeah. Oh, uh, but yeah. I did. I did also see see parts of the Muda Shizuka match, and it it was it was it's it, it's a it's a wonder how Muda, with all of his five million years, can still out wrestle Shinsuke. I'm Muda is even though he's old, still one of the debatably the best of all time. So. Yeah, that's true. But like you know, Luthez was pretty yeah. impressed. Luthez was pretty impressive in his sixties too, and he was nearly dead. <laughs> you know, it's just the thing of like they they had these spots that I figured would would be to let Muda catch his breath, and then Muda would get up, and she's she's gonna continue lying down. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> that doesn't not a great look overall. Yeah. Shinsky! Shinsky now! Shinsky <laughs> now! <laughs> that's the reason that's the reason that, that he, he lied down too much John wasn't there. <laughs> they, they, should have, they should have sent Cena to be his manager. He was lying down then. That's why Cena wouldn't stop shouting. Uh-huh. Uh, I imagine I'm now imagining fucking Shinsuke's music hits. Which, by the way, they used his WWE music, so that was su- that was a surprise. But I'm imagining uh, Shinsuke's music hits, and then they just do the fucking the Tony entrance from SVRO10. Him and Cena. Oh god! <laughs> actual, actual American, real no Shinsuke should have come out the real American. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but he still does his stupid taunt. I don't know when, but he does it. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna make that. But once I'll, once I'll buy Hogan in, in 2K22, I'm giving, I'm giving Shinsuke the, the real American gimmick. <laughs> okay. But the violins give him his power, so he's just weak the whole time. So nothing changes. Yeah. <laughs> I can't explain why, but there's some kind of uh, muscle I pulled near my groin that is hurting every time I talk. Ah. Weird. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, where, that's where your vocal cords are. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Every vocal cord is personalized. <laughs> I speak straight from the balls. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I think that's that's it. Oh yeah, we we are talking about the CAW stuff. So yeah, these C A W S exist, I guess. <laughs> w. Help. No. Videos. Have you made a CAW yet? Ah. Uh... Why not? I might have. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> Most of my memories of messing around with CAWs are going in and uh, giving wrestlers their renders as uh, icons. Mm. So they don't look out of place, you know. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, that's a difficult process, by the way, because image formatting in that game sucks. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just like it. I, I I explained to Pink how many crashes I have to I have to face sometimes because the game batches them. <laughs> uh, they come in fits and spurts. Yeah, it, it's like so, sometimes sometimes the game runs fine for a couple of hours. Okay, I just got a close up of Michael Cole's crotch. Cool. Anyway, so amazing. <laughs> so anyway, oh, 
Yeah, so, so sometimes the game will fight for a couple of hours, and then it's just gonna be like, okay, so I went into the universe, crash. All right, reload the game. All right, I guess I'll go in and edit this this wrestler while, while that stops, crash. Okay, I guess I'll just edit movie, crash. All right, I guess I'll make a t crash. Okay. It's a WWE game. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's 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 been a thing that I've been having to deal with. It's it's either either this whole universe doesn't work <laughs> for some reason. Like I, I've I've had I had at least one crash on on uh, fucking community creations. Which was cool. Yeah, community creations is a bit. It, it, community creations doesn't have as many problems as it did in past years, but it does still act a little bit iffy sometimes. Yeah. With that said, the, wait, is the download cap gone? I forget. I think download so. cap is gone. Thank God. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, W, are you going to yes. be uplo uploading anything this week? Uh, well, uh, I'm sounding a little bit weird right now because I'm sitting on the floor to try to deal with this uh, pain. The pain, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the ghost CBT. You didn't believe me. <laughs> I, I, my coat... <laughs> The COVID left several days ago, but okay. Um, what was it? Right. No, uh, I don't believe so. I would definitely like to get some videos uh, ready for Total War Warhammer, but uh, so far I've made remarkably little progress. All right. Then you can, you can go ahead with your week. Ah, uh, let's see. I don't really recall call a whole lot aside from I mentioned on the uh, Discord. I after a year away from Civ Six, I tried to hop back in, and three separate times I tried to start a Pericles game. Three separate times I failed. First time I spawned on desert, nothing but garbage tiles, trapped between the Mayans and uh, some other Civ Congo or somebody. I don't know. Didn't get to meet a single city state. Early Dark Age, no room to expand, just a terrible start position. And it was the kind of start position where I knew it was inevitable that one or two, one or the other of the other two civs was going to declare war on me for the real estate I had. So I just went, no, this isn't happening. Second game I start, I start a city and I get my first settler. I start that second city. Oops, four barbarian quadrimes. <laughs> and they nuke that city off the earth faster than you can blink. Nice. Okay, well, we're, clearly we're not doing that one. Third game I start. All right, we're off to a relatively good start. We got some good city-states. Still wound up losing a city to Quadrimes. Which Oof. is the third. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pank, you've got way more experience with this game. I'm curious to see whether it, I'm worse or better about... Uh, whether I am worse about this than you. I don't think I'm better about this than you. There's no way. How many <laughs> cities have you lost to Barbarian Quadrimes in your time of Civ Six, Pink? None. Okay. I'll have to ask soon, because I'm pretty sure I'm the only person who's lost it, even one city to Barbarian Quadrimes, let alone three. <laughs> I See, I've imagine. lost cities to uh, city-states that I declared war on and didn't have the proper military to uh, combat, unfortunately, but I've never lost them to Barbarians. Okay, I've definitely lost three to Quadrimes, and I might have also lost one to Horse Archers at some point. Because my thing is, I don't research archery immediately so much anymore, which I think is part of why I'm having such a harder time in Civ Six. So the only range unit I have is Slingers, and since in the early game, galleys take forever to build... Mm-hmm your defense against quadrimes is supposed to be archers. So I just need to remember, 
Like, I just need to remember you go for archery immediately, regardless of who you're playing. I kind of forgot about that, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, I just got my ass whooped in all three games and just not have it. Yo, I am straight up not having a good time. <laughs> of course, I put in more time with Gladius and had a lot of fun playing those. Uh, that The game with the goes things, yes. Yes. Oh. Uh, still very fun game. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. The last few days, I have just been off my game entirely. Just sleeping at the wrong times, eating at the wrong times, eating poorly. My God, I gotta get this shit in order. Alright, and the last uh, game that I put a lot of time into was God of War Ragnarok. Still not finished the game, by the way. Uh, I've been putting a shitload of time into it, but it is a big game. Big, big game. It is still a cool game. However, I put a lot of time into Muspelheim. Muspelheim is worse than Muspelheim in God of War 4. God of War 4 Mu Muspelheim Fun series of challenges that uh, creatively test your skills. God of War Ragnarok, Muspelheim. Pain in the ass. Mm. So, there are three challenge chambers and there's the forge. Each challenge chamber, you have to beat all the challenges at to unlock the forge. Once you unlock the forge, it says, Okay, now beat any of the challenge rooms again, any two of the challenge rooms again, to make a new challenge. There are six different combinations you can make. Beat, like... Each of them unlocks a different challenge, and those challenges are generally pretty cool. But the requirement is, go back and beat the challenges you've already beat several times to put the combination into the forge. Oh. Yes. So I already cleared out there are three challenges in room one. I cleared them out several times. But because in that, you know, six combination thing in the forge, challenge room one gets used three times as the ingredients for the forge. And I'm sure the game designers were looking at that and thinking, oh, this will motivate the player to go back and play the challenges they had a hard time in and, and master them. But players optimize the fun out of the game, right? That, the most, one of the most vital maxims of game development, game design, whatever. Right. So I optimized the fun out of it and kept repeating the same challenges that I already knew I could easily beat. And let me tell you, that got monotonous real quick. Oh, and after the first after God War Four's Muspelheim, where you just simply proceed up the side of a mountain doing challenges, I thought that was a very big downgrade. I thought that was not a very smart idea. With that said, I am very close to one hundred percent in the game. I am very fascinated by where the story goes because this is an RPG. I've been just pushing through all the side content before proceeding with the story, the main story. But I play off sidekick content really wanting, like, I, I really want to see where the main story goes. I really want to see where it goes, goddammit. Uh, one thing I want to just throw in real quick, it is a very fun experience playing the game with a Kratos who is very different. Because God of War 4 Kratos was different. Eddie, you know that. Yeah. And God of War Ragnarok Kratos is even more different. Because this is 100% what? There's a worry anytime you go into a new entry in a franchise that a character will forget their character development and will have the same problems they had in the previous entry. Kratos is not having that. God of War 4 Kratos' issue was that he was, very, he was too emotionally distant. He was too controlled. He never really spoke with people honestly. He was never willing to acknowledge emotional issues. He never wanted to help anyone. And that was, though, a massive step up from the Greek trilogy Kratos, who was like, you have problems? Don't worry, I'll rip you in half. Ragnarok Kratos has actually, he feels like he's been through God of War 4. So he's just way more emotionally open and willing to talk shit out and just help people. But he still knows that he's Kratos and that Mimir and Atreus assume he's an asshole. Yeah. So there, are, so there are times he plays around that. Where he just go to all this trouble to save uh, this uh, super magic giant jellyfish that's trapped underneath the deserts of Alfheim. 
And Atreus is just like, Dad, Father, why are you helping him? You are, you hate helping people. And Kratos <laughs> just goes like, I don't know, son. Why am I? Oh, man. And there's a lot of very heartwarming moments with Kratos, not just with Atreus, but with just about every character on the cast. It's just so weird playing an emotionally mature Kratos. Who at this point seems like he has solved most of his problems and is now just solving other people's problems. Yeah. Kratos still has a few issues. Don't, don't get me wrong. And they're very interesting issues. Because they analyze very different sides of the... Uh, the issue, the Greek issue with Kratos and God of War 4 was, I don't want people to find out about it. Ragnarok, the cat is out of the bag. Near every character in Ragnarok knows what Kratos got up to in Greece. And not to spoil the game too much, I don't think this is really a spoiler, but Kratos and God of War Ragnarok, they pose more of a question of, how does Kratos feel about the idea that he might be backsliding in some way? Because the thing, is, the thing is, the title of the game is Ragnarok. And it's the last Norse game. So you know going in, oh, most of the Norse pantheon is going to bite it pretty hard. Shit is going to go down. And so Kratos' question that he deals with in the time of Ragnarok is, the prophecy says, I'm going to go to war with Asgard the same way I went to war with Olympus. I'm not comfortable with this. <laughs> I've been there. That sucked. It, I just hurt a lot of people and didn't gain anything for myself. I don't want to do this, but at the same time, I have a strong feeling they're going to force my hand. And boy, does chills do go down your spine every time they hint a little bit at it. Yeah, so, cool so, boy, so, yeah. Suddenly you just hear number 15. Yeah. <laughs> Got a war Ragnarok. I'm kind, I'm kind of hoping, I'm really hoping that whenever, like, because I've not, yeah, I'm probably about 70%, 80% of the way get through the game based on what Soon's been saying to me, but I'm really hoping that the final, like, minutes of the final hour of the game is Kratos riding Jormungandr up the walls of Asgard, and he's just looking up and shouting, Odin! And it, the camera just draws back to the classic Greek perspective as there's just shitloads of enemies. Yeah. <laughs> the old Greek music starts playing as just everyone else is like, oh shit, he's back. Yeah. Fucking. Odin looks at this guy. This guy, Zeus is there. He's just like, yup. <laughs> Zeus's face is in the sky. He just looks at Odin and says, you fucked up. <laughs> Zeus just shrugs. Shit happens. Oh man. A very huge cast of side characters, by the way. It was like I think it's I think God of War 4 and Ragnarok are both very good. I think Ragnarok is ultimately the better game because it has more content and the story goes who directions and there's emotional beats and things. But I think that they are different uh, experiences, both story and gameplay-wise. As God of War 4 is a very tight story, there's really only a cast of like six or seven characters in God of War 4. Like Kratos, Atreus, the dwarfs, Freya, Balder. That's really it. Maybe Magni and Modi, you could say. But that's really it. Ragnarok has a humongous cast. That kind of feels like it's constantly expanding. Oh. But they're generally very fun characters. Uh, there's only one main story character that so far I'm just kind of consistently underwhelmed by, and that's because he only gets a scene once in a blue moon. Uh. uh they introduced Thor's daughter, by the way, and Pink, you'd love her. Excellent. <laughs> She's a... Uh, uh, she takes after her father a hell of a lot more than she does her mother, and uh, Addy, at the very least, you know what God of War Thor looks like. Yeah. So, given the clues that have been provided, I think you can guess why I think Pink would love her. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Like, she is very much her dad's daughter, except just 
Thor, Thor, by the way, very different character than what I was expecting. Uh, his character goes in a very different direction from what God of War 4 sets up, while at the same time a very similar one. He, he's, a very inter he's a much more interesting dude than I was expecting, because I was kind of expecting him just to be a drunk asshole. Yeah. Because <laughs> all, all the stories you get in God of War 4 of Thor are, Thor is a drunk asshole. Odin, by the way, also very well done. Very uh, interesting guy that you can never be entirely sure whether he's being honest with you or if he's just playing everyone around him into his hands. Yeah, I, I saw people around, around the time of the Game Awards. I saw people being being like, "Odin sucks. He's just he, like he, he's he's written like Whedon." I don't even know what that's supposed to mean anymore. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I don't like, know. Like, like just Whedon. Oh. Oh, because Joss uh, Odin Odin does get some funny lines every now and then, and Odin does kind of have the same problem Atreus does, where he Atreus sometimes had a bit of a goofy issue in God of War, where his accent is more or less just generic American, and he sometimes talks vaguely like a kid would of the last forty years in our you know present day real world, and. Generally, it's executed well enough you don't notice, but it is a little odd sometimes when Atreus is... Atreus sounds particularly like a modern kid, and you're like, hey, wait, this is like Dark Age Europe, isn't it? Right. Odin does have a little bit of the same problem. Odin, for the most part, speaks with a generic American accent. And, I, th boy, th let me tell you, there are a lot of Americans in ancient Scandinavia. Yeah. But... Yeah, Odin in particular has a very casual manner, and he doesn't mind to j crack jokes at the expense of near everybody in Eyeshot except Atreus, because, you know, manipulative. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I liked about him, though, that he was like a mob boss. That, wor that worked for me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it t at first, it's very jarring, because you expect Odin to be, Hello, I am Odin, Raven God, or whatever. And no, Odin shows up and it's like, Hey, nice house you got here. Odin, Say, uh, Odin. you and me, Kratos, we need to have a talk. Odin shows up and he, go, he goes, what's kind of funny, like a clown? Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I kind of wish that he, he, he was fucking portrayed by, by Pesh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just for the hell of it. Uh, Joe Pesh would have made a fun Heimdall. Yeah. Because huh, Heimdall, I said it last week. But Heimdall, delightful character because he is just the biggest heel on the planet. Yeah. Every scene Heimdall is in, like, I'm smiling from just how much of it... Every word that comes dripping out of his mouth is just smeared in shit. Yeah. And every dialogue line, I'm just thinking, man, Kratos is gonna give it to this guy so fucking hard. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah, God of War Ragnarok. Really having a lot of fun. Next week, I will definitely have the game finished. So, yeah. And the last thing to note I did this week was I watched some wrestling. Why All did right. you do such a silly thing? The down was smacked last night. Oh, no. Uh, Triple H is still in charge, thank God. So no one shit themselves or gave birth to a hand. Hallelujah. Yet. Yet. <laughs> All right, so last night we got Gunther versus Braun Strowman, and it was good. It was a good match. Gunther pulled Braun Strowman, pulled the best out of Braun Strowman that he could. It was not a great Gunther match, though I will say, because mm. Braun Strowman a little bit harder to work around than say Ricochet or Sheamus. Understandable, yeah. Like we got a tier to our Gunther matches so far. Ricochet and Sheamus are at the top. In the middle is his matches against Ray and Shinsky. He he got good shit out of Ray though. Then at the bottom, I'd say is his match against Braun, but it's still good. Now I know Ted, I te I know Ted saw the slightest bit of flab on Gunther and immediately decided that he was <laughs> hell from two years ago. Yes, uh, it, it, Ted's got a problem, man. He's got a fucking yeah, absolutely. Problem. I will not I will but, not I will not let any, any any anyone else influence my opinion aside from my own and. Aside from Vince McMahon. <laughs> yeah. 
I I do feel bad for Ted because you can tell Ted is at, is extremely conflicted with Vince nowadays because he's still like there there's some part it almost unironically feels like something Ted would say like I'm imagining a Ron Swanson quote Ron Swanson esque dialogue of you know there's only three men I've respected in the history of this world Jesus Christ Ronald Reagan and Vince McMahon <laughs> and like I feel like. There are a couple of phrases we could gather to use to just introduce people to Ted and who he is. That would be one of them. But yeah, anyways, good match. Good, good match. Uh, Gunther never lifted Braun. He put him over as being a big fucker. Nice. Gunther, Gunther focused exclusively on the shoulder. Uh, Braun kind of forgot a few times which shoulder was injured, which is typical for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, so he was he was doing short arm, short arm forearms, using the injured shoulder to pull Gunther in, and it's like okay, I can see where Braun was like okay, I shouldn't hit him with the arm injured shoulder because that doesn't make sense. But it's like okay, but Braun, the idea of the short arm moves is that you're pulling the guy in with the other arm and then hitting them with the other. You know right. that, right? <laughs> Still, nonetheless, a good match. Uh, I am a little disappointed that Gunther had to cheat to win, even against an injured Braun. I know they want to put Braun over as the monster. Yeah. But Gunther, I don't know. I'm a Gunther mark, so I rule unfairly in these things, but I prefer Gunther as an honorable heel. Gunther is the heel because he crushes your favorite babyface's dreams, not because he cheats, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, and, and speaking of, it is a little bit odd, because, like, well, come to think of it, Gunther has actually got very lucky in that he's pretty well entirely except maybe, Braun, the Green, they were in Green Bay, so, uh, Braun was over with the Green Bay audience. Disgusting. Very good, surprisingly good crowd, by the way. Not super loud with their cheers or boos, but very chant-heavy, and they didn't have asshole chants. They were mostly pretty funny and just good chants. No. Nice. But anyway... Anyways, Gunther has been mostly very lucky getting baby faces that work perfectly as underdog baby faces that you want to cheer for, and then Gunther crushes their souls. Yeah. Like, even Sheamus was an underdog going into that match, and it's Sheamus. He's not exactly tiny. Uh-huh. Uh, there were two women's segments. Uh, they... First was Tegan Knox versus Zia Lee. Weird match. Mo both of those have generally seemed pretty good so far, but they were just kind of a bit out of sync. Hmm. Tegan mostly looked good. Zia was not having a good day, though. She had a nice-looking exploder suplex, but she was throwing a lot of kicks that missed. I believe it, yeah. And I have to ask, did Zia Lee have a kung fu gimmick before Vince took her over? Kind of. Was she a big kicker before Vince took her over? Yes, yes. Was she always this bad with kicks? Um, not always. Uh, I'd say she's definitely uh, newer, so she's just off the bat not as good as most people. But she was competent enough. She, uh, she didn't have too many matches in NXT, though. Well, it seems like that entire generation of NXT women got rushed up to the main roster too early. Yeah, absolutely. And not only did that cause trouble because all of them were too green for the main roster, but it also has caused trouble because they also rushed up a new generation of developmental women who aren't who aren't even ready for NXT. Mm -hmm. Like we're we are really like we are really looking at maybe two or three women on NXT that look like they can be main roster ready, and two of them are teammates. Yep. <laughs> uh, either which way, yeah. Uh, Tegan Knox versus Ily. Tegan wins. Oh my god! Yeah, I was confounded by that because Tegan Knox, since her return, has just been taking pins. Yeah, and the way she the way she returned wasn't particularly bombastic either. So the the. Yeah. What I got was that Triple H had brought her back just to take pins, just to job. So I was shocked by this. Yeah. Zia Lee, like, maybe she just needs more time in the oven. Send her back down to NXT. I don't know. I, I think that'd be fair. 
I, I don't think she was super ready when she got called up because she was just starting to hit her stride in NXT when she did get called up. So yeah. that, that was definitely a case of being called up too early. You know, Lacey Evans suffered the same fate where she was just oh, starting to get hit her stride in NXT and then she's up on the main roster. Apollo Crews as well, just starting to get over an NXT main roster. Yeah, Apollo Crews, I can absolutely see, is the guy that Vince goes, I need him immediately! Yeah. Uh, Vince and big guys. Oh boy, never get enough time in the oven. <laughs> Lacey, poor fucking Lacey. I mean, oh my god. Like I, I, I've missed out on her early years, but given the way they were, what I've heard... They're running a gimmick of Ric Flair knocking her up, weren't they? <laughs> that was kind of not not the case, but reality uh, kind of dictated that. So uh, the storyline there was, yeah, Rick was her weird older boyfriend or whatever that situation was. But uh, Lacey got pregnant in real life, so they had to write her off TV. And... They, they, I don't think on television they ever specify that she was carrying Rick's daughter, but that was certainly a joke that came out after that. So, like, at this point, the bookers have to, the creative, whoever, pretty well owes Lacey Evans money, don't they? Like, yeah. She. I, I know it's an overused thing to say, well, this wrestler's actually great. It's just the creative doesn't know what to do with them. But, mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, look at every storyline Lacey's been in, every gimmick they've gave her. Yep. I mean, why it took this long to just go, all right, forget the tragic backstory. We can just have her be a Marine. We can just have her be Sergeant Slaughter, but a woman. Why that took so long, I don't know. Why they <laughs> felt they had to... Why they felt they had to get rid of the uh, 50s, uh, like, uh, oh, I don't remember the name, but why they had to get rid of the 50s fashion gimmick, I don't know, because again, that was super unique, and it was immediately distinctive, You, it made you remember her. Yep. Like, yeah. By the way, the Swords of Slaughter thing, super explicit, given that in the pre promos they've been shown for, she's already using the Cobra Clutch to finish. <laughs> Which, thank God, they finally told her, "Do Lacey, stop just using a generic punch as a finish. <laughs> it's not even a good punch. We're not going to let you use your fucking old pile driver, because no pile driver's on TV. But find something else. Mm-hmm. She starts doing a stars clash. Like, Why can't I drop people on their heads? She starts doing a stars clash. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever road agent that is, she gives them a Styles Clash right there and then there. Yeah. <laughs> Wish McClure, McClure was able to do or was allowed to do it. Why can't I? Yeah. Yeah. AJ Styles looks on in the background going, aww. Yeah. <laughs> I'll blame the round earthers for this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, AJ, AJ's great. He's just easy to make fun of between his accent and his occasional tendency to say weird things. The yeah. gay community. <laughs> oh my god. He, he'll never leave that down. Like it's <laughs> it's not even it's not even some, something he, wrong he did, it's just funny. Well, hang on, I don't know what this is. Elaborate. There was like there, there was a uh, uh, someone back back when he was in TNA. Uh like in the in the early parts of his his career, if memory serves. Uh, someone called up AJ and made a recording of it that that got uh, spread online. Where they're mm -hmm. like, AJ, AJ, you have a. Uh, we just wanted to tell you that you have a lot of, a lot of fans in the gay community. And he just he just replies, the gay community. <laughs> <laughs> oh the oh, <laughs> uh yeah. Would he not have been in the same locker room as like Orlando Jordan at that time? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, man. Anyways, yeah. The other women's segment that uh, happened was a, a match, Raquel Gonzalez versus Liv Morgan. 
because, hey, Liv Morgan made Raquel look good a few weeks ago. Let's try and make that happen again. But hey. now, Raquel's, now Raquel's turning heel for some reason. And also, we don't have, and also we don't have the same story for the match because Raquel's not supposed to be injured anymore and now lives the babyface and Raquel is the heel. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. So Raquel isn't fighting from underneath and Liv doesn't get to show that she's smart. So we've gotten rid of both of the things that made that match work. So now Liv is just being the plucky, plucky underdog who goes crazy. Which, plucky underdog Liv, sure, yes, thumbs up. Crazy Liv, no, thumbs down, please. <laughs> Absolutely not. Nobody buys it. Sorry. Well, Liv, should at, Liv should be the female Zack Ryder. Right? Yeah, we love awesome. Zack Ryder. So, so run, run off the stage by Kane and then fired? Yeah. Uh, Ronda pretty well did run her off the stage and then fire her. With that said, Addy, you are leaving out Zack Ryder's underdog Intercontinental Championship win. That was a pretty big one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I fear that one day Ryder's going to return to WWE and suddenly be way more over like Cody. You know? Yeah. Gotta have him one day. But anyways, yeah. The, it, it didn't quite, like... Credit where credit is due. No, nothing exploded. No one botched anything. Because Liv is... Liv is a very feast or famine wrestler, ain't she? Yeah. Uh, but it definitely didn't have the magic that the last Liv versus Raquel did. And they had a weird spot where Liv... Liv and Raquel went to the outside, Liv threw Raquel into the stairs, went to go and get a table, unfolded it, and immediately you're like, Liv, no. You, get, uh, the Oblivion <laughs> is a, I agree, the Oblivion is a shit finish, but you can't do Sinton f to the table outside in every match. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, fine, she, it, way, it's fine, she'll, she'll look in the level lock on the table. Liv takes oh, no. too much... Liv takes too much time to get... Excuse you, she'd do the guillotine choke, Addy. You remember your submissions. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck she does, so... Liv takes too much time to set up the table, so she has to get back in the ring and then get back out to reset the ref count. <laughs> Which is such a goofy video game thing. Yeah. Yeah. What is the leniency and, by the ref to just be like, yeah, I'm going to continue to count you out, but I'll let you set up the table, no problem. I, like I, won't, like, I won't say anything. Like, is it supposed to be that everybody can just cuck the ref? Like, that's just in the rules now? Yeah. If I get reset the count? <laughs> and, and he, should be like in Japan, where the ref just figures out, oh, they're doing this now, and stops counting. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, ref go, the ref goes out and goes goes out and super kicks them, puts them back in has, the ring. Has has there ever been a count out in Japan ever? Probably back in the eighties. Like maybe maybe some Bruiser Brody matches where he wanted to stay protected, so him and Abdullah would just brawl back to the fucking gorilla position. But yeah. uh, either either which way. Yeah, it, it ends up... I, honestly, I was looking at my phone for this part, so I missed it, but apparently nobody goes through a table. Raquel just pulls everyone back into the ring, and then Chingota bombs live anyways. One, two, three. And I was just like, eh. Like, I don't know. Raquel... It depends. Like, Raquel's still doing her face entrance. She's still smiling and showing off her back, so that's already weird. Yeah. But if they want if they want to make Raquel heal, she has to go back to being beef, right? Yeah. She was Dakota Kai's beef when she was a heel. Yeah. Try to do that. Or keep her as a face and keep her being a surprisingly a plucky underdog who's a head taller than everybody else on the roster. <laughs> oh man. I feel like they need a new Chingona Bomb animation in 2K23. Like, she's had too many times where she actually does the Chingona Bomb from the proper Power Bomb startup, right? Yeah. Because, Ch I forget, how does the Chingona Bomb animation start in 2K22? Oh, lordy, I don't remember. It's, it's... She doesn't start out from a schoolboy, I know that. 
No. Um, that, that's that's Roman's Jingo to Bomb. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I think she uh I think she might do like a choke slam slash uh spine buster carry. Yeah, she does like some kind of short arm start. Mm-hmm. Like she pushes them out and then short arms them back into it, which is weird. She's definitely not done that at least in the, on the main roster. Yeah. On the main roster, she has absolutely just like done it, like almost like Kevin Nash would do the jackknife. Yeah, which works. You know, a lot I think better. they um, there was a spot. It was an actual match. It was a spot where they had Raquel put somebody to the table, or a table, or it might have not even been a table. I think it was just an in-ring segment, promo segment, where I think that specifically is where they uh got their animation inspiration from. Because I believe in that spot, Raquel grabs him by the neck shoulder area, hoists them up in the kind of choke slammy nature, and they just put their legs over her shoulder. So that's how they got that Jingo in a bomb anima- animation. I can what see they where they'd make it. I can see where they'd make that decision because that is kind of like, oh what a beast. What beast? Yeah, the beef. But, yeah, but like it, it's a little awkward to give like the character the animation of the one time they did the move in a really cool way, but not give her the standard one. Yeah. Also, wasn't there a time where Raquel had somebody in like a standard power bomb position, like she was about to jackknife them, but she, then she just kind of pushed them over onto her shoulder instead? Yeah. I want to say there was at least one or two times she did that, which yep. is weird. Uh, yeah. And, uh, let's see. At the end of the show, they had KO versus Sammy. Solid match. Not super exciting. Probably... <laughs> the thing with those guys, right, is it's like, okay, this isn't going to be the best match these two have even had with each other. Yeah. But still, it's a fun match. Uh, I swear to God, Sam, like... Is it just me, or since the top dollar botch, everyone on a wrestling show has been doing topek and high lows. <laughs> Here's how to do it, nerd. Like, top dollar. Like, this is the, one of those things. I know that at a certain point as a wrestler, you gotta develop the personality of I'm right, everyone else is wrong, I'm great, and that top dollar guy seems to have that personality. But can you not see everybody dunking on you? Not just Twitter, because Twitter dunking on you is one thing. But they don't understand what it's like to actually wrestle. So there's times where they dunk on people for shit that's not actually their fault. However, yeah. do you not see all the other wrestlers clearly taking the piss out of you? And crea- <laughs> creative taking the piss out of you by making it your gimmick that you botch top rope dives? Uh, I, I thought, I thought and, that creative, creative just ran to the ring and started doing topic on helos. Uh, <laughs> fucking Michael Hayes and Road Dog doing topic on helos? Yeah. Vince. Bru- Bruce, Vince isn't on creative right now, thank God. Uh, Bruce Pritchard doing topic and I Kevin Dunn? Oh, no. I don't think Kevin all Dunn of- can see above the top row. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, all of the, the, the fucking Fresh University dropouts that Stephanie hired. Doing topic on Helos. <laughs> Cameraman, the cameramen start doing Topek and Helos. With the camera. With the camera, so they can get better angles of certain shots. Yeah. We don't get to see it, because they come out before the show starts, but Michael Cole and Wade Barrett are doing Topek and Helos before, before every SmackDown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but apparently he's tra- training Cole pro- for his ring return. Ricochet proposed to that ring announcer chick as they are both doing Topek and Helos. Yeah. <laughs> If there's anyone who would prepare prose marriage at midair, that would be Ricochet. Yeah. This is true. All right. Yeah, but the end of the match, KO versus Sammy. The Bloodline does a run-in, despite the fact they told Sammy they weren't, and they start whooping KO's ass, and actually the ref goes, what the fuck, and disqualifies Sammy. And Sammy holds out his hands at the Husos, like, what the fuck, guys, I had this. But Jimmy, 
Jimmy goes oh like so Sammy's holding his arms out and like shouting at the Usos. Jimmy goes op- up and high fives with his open hand. Nice. <laughs> and later on, as like the Usos put KO on the commentary table, Jimmy goes back over to Sammy, like, yeah, we're kicking his ass. And Sammy just gives him the most like dead, half hearted like secret handshake in the world where he's just slowly doing it and very limply. <laughs> yeah. And then Solo Sokoa just hops up on the barricade and just does a big superfly splash from the barricade to the table. Cool. Because he's also absorbed J- uh, Jimmy Snuka's soul now. I see. He did it. Like, did, 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 did Solo Sokoa go to hell to re- regain it? <laughs> Probably. Uh, just, just Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. We got the portal there. Oh, man. Like, when Roman retires, suddenly Sokoa will just do a spear to whoever's near him. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon pops up. Sokoa learned spear. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking oh, of Sikoa, right. we, 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 we are going to go into too, too much of a tangent. I did enjoy in the community, community creations how some, some solo Sikoa CAWs were censored to, to be solo, censor, 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 Oa. Um, I don't get it, but hey. <laughs> since, uh, arbitrary censor systems are so delightful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, SmackDown. So that is SmackDown. That is also my week. All right. Then I believe we can call it a podcast. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>